Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Storm King's Thunder. This is episode 21 of our amazing adventure right here at Proficiency Bonus, and we're so glad that you guys are tuning in tonight. Uh, just a couple quick announcements to get out of the way before we begin tonight's session. We want to thank Team MZ for all their uh, support of small streamers like us. We also want to thank uh, Many Sided Dice for their partnership. They have an awesome magic compendium out right now called Lost Artifact of Greygast, which not only includes a bunch of 5e magic items, but also includes all the lore and the background knowledge that goes with those things. It's a wonderful tool for DMs to use and to uh, flavor up your games with some really interesting magic items. So thanks, Ma uh, Many Sided Dice. Also, Nightshade Creations, we want to uh, throw a big shout out to them for their partnership. Uh, they create some dice trays and um, dice rolling towers and things like that. So make sure you go ahead to Nightshade Creations and check them out. Uh, I'm going to take you guys over to our wonderful cast for this evening. Uh, so we're going to jump over here. And we've got most of everybody here on our uh, on our stream. Everybody say hello. JJ's having a little fun this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got we've got our we've got our Moby back. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, maybe we need some more technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, it's just the homegrown zucchini. It's just the homegrown zucchini. Um, Nick is in or not? Right. He doesn't keep the zucchini in the room. <laughs> Zoss is still working on some technical issues that she's having with her computer right now. So hopefully she can uh, get her webcam rolling for us. Uh, if not, you guys can look at that wonderful, uh, beautiful icon that she has right there. Uh, but you'll still it's be able to. <laughs> you'll still be able to hear her uh, chiming in the game through chat. Um, so. If you haven't gotten a chance to check it out, make sure you go to our YouTube channel to check out last week's episode, episode 20, Zulkin's Dagger. Um, the, the campaign shifted uh, drastically last week as Mulfin discovered that Lachlan was carrying a magic item on him, a very powerful magic item uh, in his boot that he had in his possession for uh, quite some time. Uh, didn't even really take a look at it or know what it was, but use it to peel oranges. <laughs> <laughs> um, upon this discovery, the party headed to Calarian, the Silver Dragon's uh, mountain top citadel. Uh, that is his lair. Um, they got a chance to see a little bit of of Calarian's vast horde of his collections of mainly uh, human-made artifacts and sculptures and just fine jewelry, things like that, that um, he's he's very fascinated by just humans in general. Um, the party then went to uh, kind of take it easy for the night in the uh, Citadel. Uh, Mulfin wanting to take a closer look at this dagger. Uh, they discovered that these um, gemstones in the dagger looked very similar to the gemstones that uh, Diana and Kella had in their possession. <clears throat> Upon trying to attune to the dagger, Mulfin found himself transported into some kind of... I'm not sure how you describe it. Some other area, pocket dimension or something that was just... Uh, unique and awkward uh, he found himself standing in a graveyard and he could see these women six women surrounding him one was kella one was diana standing in front of him and he also saw the image of zulkin while he was there um a lot of weirdness transpired Mulfin discovered that if he cut himself in the hand with the dagger, he could remove himself from this pocket dimension uh back to reality um, discovering he discovering this information, he took out they took out Kella's gem and he used the dagger to shatter the gem. And where we left off last week, Callista was attempting to attune to the dagger, and she found herself in the same pocket dimension, the same area. But this time, there was an empty grave where Kella used to stand. Hang on, were there glow in the dog chopsticks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they totally oh, are. Oh. <laughs> they came out of nowhere. 
<laughs> so, at this point in time, after a recap, uh, first of all, uh, anybody have anything, uh, any announcements or anything they want to sh shout out or anything, any kind of quick shout outs we got to get out of the way? There's Zoss! We can see her now. <laughs> you fixed it. <laughs> I did! <laughs> awesome, I awesome. <laughs> so, is there anything you guys want to... Any quick shout outs before we begin? Shout out to never oh shout out to uh <laughs> never trusting an Australian DM. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll let that we'll let that sus be a kind of a suspenseful <laughs> moment for our viewers uh tonight. And also so. a lesson. And also a lesson, yes. <laughs> uh, squishy level one characters. Gotta love them. So, we begin tonight, and so our story is told. And to begin tonight, I'm going to have to go ahead and change the music to start off. Because this music is too nice for right now. Changing the thriller. I'm going to give us some new music here. Karaoke time. Ooh, I like this. Let's go with this. I will do that. Yeah, that's it. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Can you guys hear okay? I don't hear anything yet. You don't oh, hear anything? No, okay. Oh, yeah. I'll turn it up a little bit because I want to really, uh, there we go. <laughs> so, Callista, you find yourself standing in a very dark cemetery almost seems like it's on a hillside almost pitch black around you you can only see maybe about 20 to 25 feet out ahead of you <laughs> and you're standing and you can see an image of diana in front of you but you also see several other women standing around you just kind of almost blankly staring towards you not much expression on their face at all. To the just to the left of you, you remember seeing that empty grave where you had heard Mulfin describe this this situation. You kind of can almost put your finger on that. That's where Kella was standing before when Mulfin visited here just a few moments ago. Out of this misty darkness in front of you, and just off of the probably the, just a little bit to the right of Diana, you can see this silhouette of a dark figure walking towards you. <clears throat> and it starts to show itself, and you can see uh, the image of Zulkin walking next to Diana. And as he walks, he's walking very slowly. He looks towards you, and then as he approaches Diana, looks towards Diana and just takes one hand and puts it over Diana's shoulder. Oh. <clears throat> Diana <laughs> Diana looks towards you and almost gives like a evil smirk and then looks towards Zulkin and then looks back towards you. And then Zulkin looks at you and says, It seems that we have a vacancy. And he points with an open hand over towards the empty grave of where Kella used to stand in this interesting pattern of women. <clears throat> it's good to see you, Callista. You are about to have more vacancies. Huh. <laughs> are you so sure? It's a promise. And how will you go about it? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <clears throat> you see, and he starts to slowly walk around Diana, and he almost like brushes Diana's cheek with his with his hand as he walks past, kind of looking at Diana for I'm a second. I'm really gripping the dagger. <laughs> I'm like, 
<laughs> and he uh, he just runs his, his his the tip of his fingers off of Diana's chin as he turns his attention back towards you, Callista, and he slowly takes a couple steps <laughs> as as Zoss flips out on webcam. <laughs> well, you can do nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, Zulkin kind of starts to walk slowly towards you, Callista, and as you see his face kind of come into view a little bit, you can see that some of the flesh off of his face is starting to just almost seems like it's melting off of his face at some points. Um, it's just a really just disgusting, just it's just grotesque as he walks towards you, and he's just walking slowly. He's not. It's kind of like a daunting slow walk as he heads towards you. He's... So I found where you and your friends are hiding. And it won't be long now before I have that dagger back in my possession. Yeah, it's going straight in your heart. <laughs> Not before I can pry it from that puny little gnome friend of yours fingers. Does it look like he's holding it right now? <laughs> Maybe not now. But I know he will. All your friends will die. I will take them all. You're a first. You don't even know what to do with that dagger. I have few ideas. <laughs> Um, then you start to hear something from behind Zulkin. You hear, stop. Enough. And you can see back behind Diana to the left of Diana, there is another figure. But it doesn't step out into an area where you can see what it looks like. It's just... A silhouette and you can tell that it's holding a staff beside it and it just kind of looks towards you Zulkin back away in due time we will have the dagger until then we have to dispose of this intrusion upon our business then all of a sudden you see the the staff move and you start to see it glow just a bit with this purplish blue glow can i and brush I... the the figure with the dagger you can attempt yes yeah okay callista as you start to run towards the figure you notice that you are not making any ground whatsoever. It's almost like everything is moving the same distance away as you're running. And all of a sudden, this gigantic amount of lightning energy just shoots out of the tip of this staff right towards you. Okay. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw for me. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Callista's pissed, so I don't care. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, Callista, attempting to dive out of the way, realizing that it's almost impossible for her to just get, get out of the way because just everything just moves in the same distance away, no matter how far you try to move. Callista, the, this electric energy just impacts you and starts to wrap all around you, and all of a sudden you jolt awake. Standing there with the dagger, Mulfin standing next to you, Moby kind of walking circles around the corner of the room. Lachlan is standing there in anticipation as you hold on to the dagger. Diana is standing beside you, uh, almost like in a frantic, wondering what it, what is what's happening. Why is her name carved on this dagger? Why, how is she linked to this thing, and what's causing it? Uh, to do what it's doing to you guys, and you guys are all back in that room, standing together again. He's not alone. Are you okay? Am I? Did I get pain? Um, it was a jolt of pain, but it wasn't. It didn't damage you at all. It just kind of knocked you out of there. Like it was kind of like a way to 
get you away from what you were seeing. He's not alone. He has someone else calling the shots. Who? Some sort of mage or something. I'm not sure. They attacked me. Um, anybody who is anybody who is uh, has the Arcana skill. If you guys want to make an Arcana check. <laughs> what is magic? <laughs> Moby doesn't know magic. <laughs> magic is a homegrown cucumber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Molfin, the the more as you as you saw what Callista has gone through, and as you're starting to really ponder this in your head, um, you have a little bit of fear in you about the power of this magic of this dagger that you're holding. Um, you've never encountered anything like it. You've read some things about uh, powerful mages being able to infuse their souls with objects before, but you've quickly kind of shunned away from reading that material because of just the pure evil of what that means. Um, and it it fills you with a little bit of fear for what this might mean. I'm dead. <laughs> well, Kella's gone. There's an empty grave. I think she's free. A grave? Does that mean that she's dead? No, I think that meant that each woman was inside a grave. And we freed her. She's gone. There's no body. Okay. Diana, I really think we should destroy yours. Shouldn't we go find the real Kella first and make sure she's okay? That's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> By the way, can I have my dagger back? <laughs> no, I really don't think you or Diana should have this. If it's going to be anyone, it should oh. be Muffin, Moby, or I. Well, we I know mean... that it is a powerful arcane object. I feel that being the only one with proper arcane education here, that it would be safest in my possession currently. You know, <laughs> if you think about it, I'm very in tune with God. Maybe a radiant kind of energy would purify it and I should keep it and attune my to concern, it and just fight Zulkin in the fade. I know Maybe. you want, I understand that sentiment, Diana, but we don't know what it means if you're still attached to this thing. Yeah. I'd rather get you off of it before you can even attune to it. I, I don't know what's going to happen if you attune and who knows? Lock oh, that's a good right. point. You might, you might be taken over somehow. You know what? Good point. Good point. You keep it. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. It's, it's all right. You got this, Callista. You, you can have this. it. You got <laughs> Put that I right like in your backpack. Everybody. You know, carry that around. <laughs> Zulkin can't find us with it, right? Like through he like. He seems to think he can. He seems to think he can track us with it now that we've attuned to it. The dagger itself, or a make an the make an insight check, Callista. Okay. Molfin, you Molfin's can actually gonna... Molfin, you can make it the insight insight check as well because you two both tried to attune to it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you are not sure. <laughs> Mulfin's just gonna rub his neck a little bit from where uh, Zulkum reached out and grabbed him. <laughs> I just want to point out that I safely carried this dagger around for quite a long time. I may be the most group. <laughs> no, that's yeah, real safe the... in your boot. That's the last thing we need. <laughs> 
Here, Callista. Permit me to carry the dagger. You can... We will leave you in its... Oh, what now? We will leave you attuned to the item. This way, if we separate the attuned individual from the actual equipment, perhaps we can minimize the risk. That's not the worst idea. Is attuning like... to it what made it what made him able to track it? Well, I believe so, because Lachlan hadn't attuned to it until Malfin did. I could attune. No. <laughs> No, we're good. I think Mo Malfin and I should be the only ones to be able to attune to it at this rate. I really don't think Diana or Lachlan should even try. Lachlan, I know you found this thing, but we don't know where you found it. We don't yeah, know what course, this means. Yeah, of course, nobody knows where, where I found it at all. <laughs> okay, I stole it directly off of Zulkin. What? <laughs> oh, I didn't see that before? Oh, you just... Lachlan, <laughs> you lied to my face again? I lie, did I? Yes, that... you did! Uh, you know... There's another point on why we shouldn't let Lachlan hold it. Mulfin, you take this. Don't attune to it. Mulfin takes it and is going to sort of turn away from everyone and squirrel it away somewhere. And at the same moment taking out a small little red packet. He's going to sprinkle a little bit of stuff in the palm of his hand and smack Lachlan in the face with that little uh, <laughs> is this one the, dose of powder. That, Which that, powder is this? That powder you got from the... Oh my goodness. <laughs> with, oh my goodness. I'm going to need oh, you to make no. a roll for me. <laughs> give, yep. give me a second. I got to backtrack in my little booksy here. <laughs> uh, roll a D100 for me, my friend. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> we are going old school. Uh, slap to the uh, I hope I'm. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Talonassus. Uh, yeah, we are having a blast, and we just started. I, I tell you, <laughs> an eleven. Oh, um, let's see. <laughs> so, uh, Loch Lachlan, as you are slapped in the face, this uh, puff of this sparkling powder just flies up, and it's kind of just engulfs your face um you now have a flying speed of 60 feet for 10 minutes <laughs> so once again you are now able to fly around like peter pan oh, kind of, like drift up off the ground and kind of like lounge back in the air <laughs> that hurt guys i mean everything happens for a reason right if lachlan hadn't stolen the stupid dagger then we would have no idea that some evil zombie zulkin had me trapped in it everything happens for a reason you, you know, could we say i'm a hero <laughs> that's really pushing that it far. okay <laughs> i want to fly up to the roof and stand on the roof upside down while i'm talking to everybody Thank you, Malfin. And giant, because I know that there's only one other person in the party who understands it. Malfin just goes, oh, I really wish I'd had done something other than the flying this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh, uh, is that Diana's the only one that can understand that with giant? Or can Moby yeah. understand that as well? Yeah. Moby knows. Moby knows. <laughs> I just hear mumbling. <laughs> All right, great, Talonassus. I'm glad I pronounced your name correct because most of the time I pronounce everybody else's name wrong. So <laughs> that's just usually the way it works for me. <laughs> Talonassus. <laughs> well, greetings, Talonassus. <laughs> um, guess my name wrong. It's only two letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I got JJ and MG down. Zos isn't so hard either. I, str yeah. I struggle with Matthew sometimes. Matt, he's so many letters. <laughs> <laughs> now they start calling me MJ and starts confusing things. <laughs> Sweet. So, um, <clears throat> you know, Diana seems to, you know, bring the conversation back to more of a, a hopeful kind of situation and thinking about the positive things that could have come from Lachlan 
uh, stealing Zulkin's dagger without him realizing it. Or just reinforcing stone. Watson's idea that there's no consequences for his actions. <laughs> <laughs> he can never um, steal from us, and he should never steal from the poor. And those are the two important things. You can <laughs> Robin Hood it up all you want, though. In my book. Lachlan, I want you to remember that up there. If you see somebody with a large coin purse, you can feel free to rob them. <laughs> As Lachlan the continues to hover around the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Callista, you start to realize that uh, you almost forgot that you have a date with a silver dragon early, early in the morning. And you guys have been spending a lot of time uh, with this yeah. situation. And uh, you're afraid that if you don't uh, get some rest now... It may be difficult for you to, uh, you know, get get your whole night's rest that you need to be effective I'm tomorrow. I'm going to sleep by the door. <laughs> okay. So a day? Yeah, a day. All <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> you <get there. laughs> I'm going to pester her until she tells me. I'm going to just poke her while she's trying to sleep. <laughs> Diana continues to poke Callista while she's... <laughs> Diana. Who is he with? Who? Clarion. <gasps> Girl, he's big. Oh my god. <laughs> A big dragon. Big D, what's up? <laughs> Get it. I was like, throw the covers over my head and I was like, <laughs> So much for the Night, dark, Diana. gloomy atmosphere we painted at the beginning of this uh, episode. <laughs> <laughs> Diana is here to lighten up everything. She's a light cleric. Yes. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Mulfa's going to attempt to shoo Diana away, and is sort of going to curl up a couple of feet away from Callista, feeling a little more comfortable being near her. I'm fine with Given that. the dagger. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Moby, what would you be doing um, as the rest of the party seems to be calming down after these interesting occurrences with maybe this dagger? Moby's still pacing. He's pacing, thinking, just muttering to himself. Uh, Moby, make a perception check for me, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, Moby, as you're walking, kind of like pacing around... You catch a glimmer of your reflection in a mirror on the wall. Um, a very old mirror that seems to have a lot of these, like, dirt marks that are kind of all around it. So it's really kind of hard to see at first, but you slowly start to walk towards this mirror. It has this very elaborate frame around it that looks like these uh, intricately carved dragons that seem to just go around the mirror. And as you walk closer, you notice your hair. Um... There is a large lock of your hair that has changed completely jet black from the red that you are used to. Oh, is this like a single strand or is this like a bunch? It's like, um, you know, maybe about an inch and a half worth in the front, kind of left. And it goes all the way up to your top knot. Completely oh, um, jet black. Oh, and I try to tuck it in and like <laughs> slip it back so it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting old. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, Moby is frantically over there, like looking in the mirror, fixing his hair, um, tucking in this this strand. <laughs> As the rest of you are kind of calm down, Lachlan, you're still kind of hovering for a little bit. Um, yeah, how long does that last? Ten minutes. Uh, so, I spent all ten minutes astronauting around. <laughs> he's doing like the the bre the breaststroke in the air yeah. as he's like going <laughs> going across the, the backstroke. Oh, thank you so much for joining the adventure, uh, Talonensis. Thank you for jumping on board and following us. We appreciate that. Um. So yeah, you're uh, you're kind of hovering over there, Lachlan, and eventually the ten minutes wears off, and you slowly make your way to the ground. I've worn uh, myself out swimming around in the air. Yeah, so uh, you can go ahead and pass out. You pass out. Uh, roll un unrolling your bedroll and getting yourself comfortable. Yep. Um, you guys hear the loud snoring of all the dwarves uh, that are on all the furniture, like scattered around the room, um, and it seems as if uh, Moby would you eventually be calming yourself down and 
Oh yes, over the next hour or so, I'll, <laughs> I'll sit there. And actually, uh, given that I've been, you know, listening kind of sporadically to their conversation, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to play out that amber stone that Diana gave to me. It was Kala's amber stone because I remember last time I looked into it, I saw a creepy Zulkin looking thing. Oh, they um. No, they, we destroyed they that. Des they destroyed that stone last week. Um, oh, geez, they took last, it off me. Last, uh, yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they actually took it. It was actually a, it was actually a ruby. Uh, Diana's was gold, like a gold-like uh, amber color. Uh, uh, Kella's was a red ruby shaped like a teardrop. And they put that thing on the floor, and they jammed the dagger into it. And it just nice. spread out in all set, these shards yeah. everywhere. Um I need to set boundaries with these people because they keep taking your <laughs> they keep, stuff. They keep taking your stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's, that's... <laughs> As I remember it, Moby volunteered with open arms and agreed to pay us for it. <laughs> wasn't it Wasn't it five silver apiece if we broke it for him? Man, I don't have any money, so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we can sell a bit on my fancy coat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice. But yeah, Diana character. still yeah. has the amber stone. If you want to ask her for it. Yeah, Diana still has the amber stone, and she's still trying to pester Callista a little bit over there in the corner. But Callista is totally ignoring her, like stone cold. Like it's yeah, head over, no, blanket it's... over the head. <laughs> you know, Callista has shut Diana down basically for the night. <laughs> it's, it's done. <laughs> I'll go to bed then. <laughs> No more big D jokes. <laughs> God damn it, I love you so much. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so Diana, um what, Diana, where would you be heading off to to sleep in this this room? I mean it's got all the furnishings, uh you know, just what what would you like, you know? There's on a, a couch. Yeah, you got a couch. There's a nice <laughs> old, like, you know, I can tell you this is like elaborate, like Victorian looking couch that you like kind of like lay down onto. Um, it's nice and comfortable. If I got to get killed in my sleep, it's going to be on a nice Victorian couch. There you go. Hey, <laughs> go. why not? Go out with class. <laughs> All right. Um,. So Moby, uh, what what else would you uh, would you like to do? I know you are, oh, are disappointed what I, what that they like robbed you. <laughs> yes, right under my nose. I didn't even know it was happening. <laughs> 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 um, I'm gonna pull out the uh, the gold dragon card that we got back in Nightstone and just. Oh, we sold that. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. So what what do I have left? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. We ate your squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They got All right. really hungry. Let that happen. No, please don't let that happen. Yeah, so I'm just going to pull that out and uh, just kind of look at it and slowly drift off to sleep. Just reminiscing when things are a little bit simpler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you uh, take a trip. Uh, take a. You just take a trip back memory lane of when, you know, you used to just try to keep Lachlan out of trouble, and now it seems like. No matter what happens, you're both knee deep in it. <laughs> <laughs> and for us, that's very large. That's like that's you know, that's, that's that's knee deep to Diana and Callista, so it'd be like up to your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Does he attune to the card and go to a graveyard? <laughs> there you go. I become a gold dragon. He becomes a gold <laughs> dragon. <laughs> All right, so time passes overnight uh every every once in a while you guys are awoken by the, the the sounds of awkwardly snoring dwarves as they like cough on their spit as they're as they're sleeping um and then you quickly find yourself drifting off back into your dreams um Callista, you are able to awaken uh, just before uh, dawn to catch your friend clarion um, the rest of you, you guys can go ahead and make whatever adjustments you need to make to your character sheets for taking a long rest. Everybody, everybody, including Callista, you guys all get a, a long rest. And... Are we long rest? Yep, long rest. Oh, ouch. Those will be helpful, I hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to put some different music on so we don't have the creeper music going the whole time. There we go. We'll go back to this. Oh, Olfen, look at those. <laughs> those might be helpful, you never know. <clears throat> right, so Callista, you, un you make your way back to that uh, landing that you had previously run into Clarion before uh, that you guys have taken off from. Um, you can see that it is still dark, but you can tell that that little peak of this yellowish kind of uh, color is just creeping at, at the horizon, kind of like it's just right before uh, sunrise. And as you walk out, Clarion looks to you and like, oh, what took you so long? Uh, we had a long night. Hmm. And I will kind of just give him like the basic relay of what happened. Okay, so he's like looking at you rather stunned and surprised at the same time. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, who is this Zulkin? Someone I'm gonna kill. <laughs> well, hopefully these frost giants don't kill us first. He's like, are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, right. I also have an idea, so we won't be seen if we get too close. And I will, I guess, get into his hands. Is he dragon form? Not yet. He's uh, he's about okay, to transform. Okay, I'll wait till he's <clears throat> while he tra after he transforms. I want to do something. This landing isn't very big, so he's almost kind of like he will like transform right as he's about ready to take off because he doesn't okay. want the this whole landing to like crumple or anything. Well, I can do it while like in I can do it as we take off. Okay, so he uh, he goes ahead and he transforms, kind of like almost swooping you up into his hand at the same time. And these massive wings just start to go, <laughs> and he starts to take off up into the uh, into the, the the chill of the uh, the early 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 morning air. Uh, what would you like? To, what are you doing? Invisibility oh, on nice. both of us. <clears throat> okay, so as he grabs a hold of you, both just. <laughs> You disappear. All the all that can be heard is these massive wing sounds going <laughs> as this, uh, as the silver dragon um, flies off into the air. Um, <clears throat> he kind of he kind of looks down uh, towards you, and he can't he can't see you in his hand. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Callista, are you... don't drop me. Oh. Oh, I see. I see what you did there. <laughs> and he he keeps on I you might keeps on that. No, I have this in my bag of tricks as well. <laughs> and he continues to fly. Um, he gets to that same point of of crossing through those mountains um, before, and you guys notice uh, you can see in the distance that that the silhouette of that ship that you saw before. This <clears throat> this ship is I, I, the best way to describe it is if you can think of an old Viking ship, um, very long, and it has these two um, kind of like curved ends on the, the I, I guess the aft, I guess what do we call the aft, and what's the, what's the back of a ship called? I don't, I'm not hip to this stuff. Um, I, I don't have a boat, I'm not a sailor. So, so, so the front and the back kind of like curve up. Um, there's oars that kind of these large oars that kind of stick out the sides of the ship as well. It almost seems like the ship doesn't have a lot of like cargo space on it, maybe underneath, but a lot of it is just what's on the what's on the main um, area, main deck of the ship. Um, there's one mast that kind of sticks up in the middle with it, that would that would support a small. Um, um, I lost the word. Sail. <laughs> and then, and then um, you guys, you start to notice there's some figures moving on the ship. Uh, this time, there's not just one frost giant. There are two frost giants um, on the ship now. And it seems like they're engaged in some conversation. Um, as you look off to the side, you can see that the two wolves that you've seen before are off on, on land uh, on the other side uh, to the left of the ship and it seems like they're just kind of like wandering around and there's another frost giant standing with them over there to the left um, <clears throat> seems like it's just kind of like hanging out with the uh, wolves like tending to them uh, sometimes you see them kind of like pick up a this huge massive branch and kind of like throw it and then the wolf goes and fetches it um, just kind of like they're just 
kind of killing some time there. But you can see that the two that are having the conversation on the ship, one you recognize is the one that was there the night before, um, moving all these um, boxes and crates. Um, they're having an intense conversation. It looks like kind of like almost like a disagreement or argument. As the the giant, or as, as this massive dragon just kind of glides through the sky. That's what you can see. He um, kind of whispers down to you. I'm, I'm, I know that we're, I know that we're invisible, but I'm afraid to get any closer. They might hear me. That's fair. <clears throat> can we maybe circle them around, see if they're, the group they're waiting for is around? Sure. Yeah. Um, go ahead and make a uh, perception check for me, Callista. Sure. <laughs> my goodness you guys i tell you <laughs> oh. wow um she sees Callista. Uh, she sees diana looking out the window wondering where she is <laughs> <laughs> i probably do <laughs> nice uh, you guys continue to glide around. Uh, once you get a little bit farther away from the ship, Clarion decides to kind of, uh, you know, he keeps kind of pushing off with his uh, the, these massive wings as he goes across a couple more mountains. Uh, you get across the, on the other side of the mountain, on the other side of the, where the river is that this boat is on, and there are three frost giants on the other side of the mountain that appear to be lost. <laughs> Almost as if okay. they are looking for the ship, but have lost their location in the uh, craziness that happened at Bryn Shander. But other so than that, total, you're... I've seen five giants? Six total. Six, okay. But there's two on the ship, one just outside of the ship, and then these three that are kind of a right, couple, right. couple mountains off from where the ship is. Okay. You do notice, like, a couple other uh, creatures, a couple polar bears, like, running back and forth. You see a giant moose. Um, you see a couple elk kind of running through the the snowy valleys and things like that. Uh, but other than that, that's really all you see at this point. Okay. <laughs> Clarion kind of whispers down to you, uh, what, do, what should we do? What was that? Clarion just whispers down to you and says, what should we do? Maybe let's head back for now. They don't seem to be doing much other than waiting for the lost ones. Fair enough. You don't think they're regrouping, do you? Oh, that's exactly what they're doing. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> 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 so, so so the uh the dragon continues to fly um and starts headed back to his uh citadel and uh, Callista, you guys eventually reach this um there we go. landing area where he kind of drops you as he comes out of form and lands onto <laughs> oh i'm cutting out a little yeah, occasionally you're dropping in and out of audio for a couple of seconds. Hmm, yeah. Weird. Sorry about that. Okay. So you guys head on back and to the landing, and he kind of drops you off, transforms back into his human form. Sitting on the lander, uh, landing, uh, the sun is now peeking up over the the mountain range, and you can see that orange glow kind of cascade over these snowy mountains. Uh, reflecting off of the side of the citadel as you guys land. <clears throat> and he, Karen, you wouldn't yeah. happen to have means of... Means of what? Sorry, you cut out. Oh, you're just, oh. There you go. No, there go. I heard your last word. <laughs> oh, I said you wouldn't happen to have any means of scrying on a person or locating them with you? Hmm. I don't believe I do. But that brings me to 
the reason I brought you here in the first place. I've been meaning to give you these. And he uh, reaches into a pouch and he holds uh, out this, uh, what looks like a simple smooth stone. Oh, and he, mm, been and, there. And he holds it out to you. <laughs> <laughs> he says, no, no, well, no, I it's... Trust, I trust Clarion, so I would have taken it without hesitation. This is, this is a sending stone. Oh, um, you can you can use it to communicate with with me. Um, he gave you his number. So mechanically, <laughs> me, mechanically speaking, for you guys, ascending stone is basically like a ascending being spell. being on Twitter. You know, you can yeah. you can you can send Clarion a tweet, and he will get it. <laughs> How many charges does it have? Um, Hashtag. I, or does it? Or is it whenever? I think you can only do it like a certain amount of times a day. Let me uh, let me double check. Um, I'm not 100% sure. And he's just kind of like, oh, I, I, knew, I knew I had it in my, in my hoard downstairs. I just needed to take a little bit more time to look for it. Sending stone. This will be very useful. Thank you. Where are you? Hey there. You guys. I guess it can only be once. once. Once per day? Once sending is cast through the stones, they can't be used again until the next dawn. Okay. If one of the stones in the pair is destroyed, the other becomes non-magical. Okay. Well, so we'll know if uh, Clarion gets blown up because the stone will stop working. <laughs> <laughs> Dark. Aww. Not necessarily. Like Not necessarily. <laughs> His stone could just get destroyed. He doesn't necessarily have to be destroyed. <laughs> yes, I I wholeheartedly agree, Moby. Like tweet him what we're eating and stuff. Like, hey, Clarion, huh? <laughs> What's the best way to cook a caribou? <laughs> you can absolutely use it for that kind of stuff. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clarion, can we get McDonald's? No, you cannot. <laughs> I'm not flying that far. <laughs> so uh, Clarion begins to walk with you, Callista, and um, he seems a little bit worried. Uh, leaving Frost Giants to just kind of like walk around this close to ten towns. Um has got him kind of thinking that either he or somebody has probably going to have to do something about it. So he's kind of been pondering that as he's kind of walking with you. Um, do you want us to go get rid of the ones that are lost? You could do that. No, I think it'd be best for you guys to possibly get on your way. You said that you've got this creepy Zulkin creature person that knows where you are. It's probably best for you to get out of here, don't you think? Yeah. It may be best for you to travel back to Bryn Shander and possibly speak to the sheriff about finding ways getting some transportation out of here. I think I need to deal with this situation. And if the Zulkin character comes looking for you, what then? We were last here, after all. I don't... I wouldn't worry about me. <laughs> Sorry, did you miss me, guys? Can't hear. Why, why is that... Why is that not? I don't understand why it's not can working. We, oh, I can hear you now. Dis, you hear me now? Discord server or something? I can try a different Discord server. Sure, my voice uh, settings say it's perfect, but uh, let's try it. Cha 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 cha. I will try. Okay. See if it makes it any break better. Break everything. <laughs> break it, yeah. <laughs> let's. Uh, we're gonna switch over. Boom. See if that helps. Yeah, you're okay right now. Sorry, what did what did Clarion say? 
Uh, he said he, uh, I wouldn't worry about me. If I have to, if I have to, I'll lay low for a while. I've done it before. Wouldn't be the first time I had somebody coming in after me. Just as a comment, uh, it's got to be something going on with the five of us, because Talonassus is saying that uh, Michael hasn't cut out once over Twitch. Well, he's also hosting. I'm also hosting it. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. So, <clears throat> Cool. I tried to switch, uh, switch my server in Discord, so we'll see if that works. Seems to be working. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, when he says he's used to, like, laying low and not being, like, sought after, Calista says she can relate to that. <clears throat> well. Thank you all for keeping my dwarven friends company last night. <laughs> I'm sure they enjoyed the company. Uh, I think they slept through most of it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sure they had they they've they've had their tankards of ale out for quite a bit of time before you arrived. <clears throat> I believe that sounds like a redhead gnome I know. <laughs> so eventually, Callista, you and Clarion make your way back to the room, and as you uh, walk into the room, you guys can see that uh, everybody else is kind of stirred awake. Uh, Lachlan is rolling up his bedroll. Um, Diana is uh, leaving out a big yawn as she's uh, getting up, kind of uh, brushing her hands through her hair as she uh, awakes. Uh, the dwarves are all. <laughs> one of them is trying to like roll out of out of out of bed while the others are just still a little. Some of them are still snoring. Um, the uh, the fire is kind of just completely burnt down to just ash and these just very faint embers uh, in the in the fireplace. As you guys walk in, um, I see Callista and I run to her. Oh no! Had it go? Had it go? I will tell Diana about the giants. Not about mm. the other stuff. I know, but that's what she's telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Ooh, cool giants. Well. So, but they're leaving? Looks like it. They're, looks like they're trying to regroup and go somewhere. I'm not sure. Okay. Do I know about Clarion's offer to deal with them so we don't have to? Yeah, I'm sure. I would have told you. Because they, they okay. think we should leave after I told them about Zulkin. Yeah, Clarion kind of goes over to one of the, the dwarves that's kind of just slowly awakening on one of the couches and... He's kind of just rubbing his his head like this, is maybe uh, shaking off a little, a bit of a headache from the the drinking of many ales the night before. And uh, you can see Clarion just kind of puts his hand on one of the shoulders, and you can see here that they're having a little bit of conversation. It sounds like he's uh, talking to him about possibly uh, helping him to fend off a couple uh, storm giants before taking them back to meet uh, Queen Dagnabbit. Uh, to talk to that, talk to her about their recent events and things that happened um, on the cloud giant castles and things like that, the, the towers that are high above the north. Uh, as you guys are all kind of getting your gear back on, getting your armor strapped back to you after a good night's rest, feeling pretty good. <clears throat> Mulfin checks for the dagger. Is it still on him? Yes. Yeah, the dagger is still there. Maybe we'd like to check for his raven. Is it turned up at all? <laughs> uh, you're looking around, and you don't you don't appear to see the raven just just yet. Uh, you have a hunch, though, that you've you've seen this happen before, and um, eventually you've you've seen that the raven <laughs> makes his way to find you eventually. So you're not you're not 100 percent worried just yet. <laughs> Mm. 
to the country. I'm very worried. <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> oh, I hope he's all right. Oh. Uh, and as you wake up, Moby, uh, every, 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 every now and then that black clump of hair just kind of goes bling and just like sticks out down in, in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask Clarion to drop us off at Brimshander when we're all ready? I, I suppose I could. That'd be helpful. Thank you. We'll have to go right away, though. I, I'm i going to get yeah, these okay. these dwarves ready to go, and I'm going to come back and pick them up. We've got a lot of traveling to do today. Thank you. So uh, you guys take some time to get everything ready, and you head back down. Is there anything else that you guys... Uh, um, would be doing here uh, before heading out. I would like to find Clarion. Okay, yeah, he's he's just standing there with you. <laughs> he's... Hey, can I talk to you? Uh, yes, of course. Okay. What what do you need, Diana? Okay. So listen, all right. See, I know that you and Callista, you know, hung out this morning. Okay, just. To... <sighs> I'm not making a thing out of it. I'm just saying she's a really great girl, okay? And I don't know what her deal is, but she's been through it, you know? And you just, you be good to her, okay? You be nice. <laughs> oh, she's so sweet. He, he, he chuckles a little bit, and he, he, he looks towards you, and he's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. See, see, I'm not, it's, it's not like that. Why isn't it? She's amazing. Are you dumb? <laughs> he, ch- he, ch- he, ch- he chuckles again. And he's like, "It's trust me. It's 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 nothing to do with whether or not she's amazing or not. It's it's just I'm you you saw you saw my horde. I'm I'm interested in humans, not half elves." Okay, you're canceled. Goodbye. <laughs> that is great. That is great. <laughs> Get a job. Stay away from her. I'm a I'm a dragon. This would never work. <laughs> I go back to Callista. I'm like, honey, you know what? Forget him. He's trash. <laughs> Clarion's just kind of like standing there confused. Like, what did I say? <laughs> yeah, you you did. Can I do an insight or intelligence check? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. You can make an insight Which check. One? Sure. <laughs> do I know what she's on about right now? Nope, I'm so confused. You're, you're kind of confused. You you look about as confused as Clarion does right now. <laughs> so he has no idea where this conversation I came Clarion, from. I Clarion, like... He just kind of shrugs I at give... you. No, I'm going to give I... Callista a full-on bear hug. Oh. <laughs> just like, don't you worry about it, honey, all right? He, he doesn't... He doesn't deserve you, okay? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clarion kind of looks over at Mulf and, and just like has this odd look on his face like he has no idea what's going on do you do you, do you understand it, it is the age of these young ones as you must know being as old as well, i'm assuming you're probably almost my age at this point and these <laughs> younglings have no no common sense what well how how old are you Oh, I am 375 years old. He kind of looks at you shocked. He's like, what? Like, really? <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm 307. <gasps> oh! oh. Huh. It's so, nice to meet someone who's been around almost as long as I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> he just kind of, he looks at you and he's like, oh, hello, sir. That's 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 amazing. You've 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 seen much of the world. You've seen much of the north. Absolutely none of it, except for <laughs> Prince and your realm. <laughs> I spent my entire life in a library up until well, the uh, red and black-haired one and <laughs> my great-great-grandson Lachlan needed needed some guidance. So I 
came down from the library and am now here and wearing leather pants. So you've so you've spent over three hundred years with your head buried in a book. Well, in many books, but yes. Hmm. It sounds it sounds odd to me. There's so much to explore, so much to see. But you've only seen the words written on parchment and pages. Hmm. Yes, and it is made it interesting to see how the youth of this strange generation deal with things. <laughs> Especially those two tall ones, the, uh, the... The druid seems well enough, but the, uh... The cleric is a little odd to me. <laughs> Although, you know... <laughs> 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 oh, get, so. a job. Get, <laughs> a <job>. get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, so, so, I loved it so much. So, <sighs> so now, as someone who has spent over three hundred years in books, you are being entrusted by helping these other two. This, this one with the red hair, and this one that. Hmm, it's this one that I wonder about. <laughs> well, I think I everyone wonders about I'm picking my Paladin. nose as he says that. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I don't spend much of my time in books. But if that is your will and your way, then so be it. But I must say that... I have a feeling there's much more adventure ahead of you. Well, hopefully not too much, but I must admit it's been most enjoyable recently. I I have these wonderful still shoes. Oh, <laughs> where did you get those? Well, a strange little gnomish fellow came and visited us on a, uh, actually on that cloud, uh, cloud giant tower you, we met you on. And... The two uh, other gnomes managed to repair his flying contraption. And as thanks, he gave us all little knickknacks. He gave me these so I could look Diana eye to eye. Oh, I, I think I saw that little creature riding on some kind of balloon in the air as we were traveling. Uh, so that was probably him, they... I, I think Got the last up and fixed his machine. The last I saw, the balloon was plummeting towards the ground. Oh, oh no! So, somehow I have a feeling that is Moby's fault. <laughs> Hopefully, that little fella has managed to survive the fall. <laughs> I'm playing with my five leftover bolts and screws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he then looks at you, looks back at you, Mulf, and he's like, "Well, I must say, I'm. I, I want you to all be careful out there, and if you need me, I gave Callista over there a, uh, a sending stone in order to contact me if you were need to contact me." Oh, that is a great honor for you to trust us with this. I shall attempt to make sure that the younglings do not use it inappropriately. Fair enough. I feel I can trust your word. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> <laughs> Between JJ and Ninja in the Twitch chat. <laughs> 375 and wearing leather pants. <laughs> That's good. I love it. All right. <laughs> so those uh, those of you that are tuning in right now, welcome back uh, to Proficiency Bonus. This is uh, Storm King's Thunder. We are in episode 21 right now. Um, I know it's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. If you guys haven't followed us yet, make sure you hit that follow button. Um, if you want to subscribe and support our channel, you can do that as well. Uh, don't forget to catch us on YouTube, too, where you can catch up on all episodes 1 through 20 of how we got where we are now. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. And... Uh, 
we are going to continue uh, moving through as our party's kind of getting ready for their, uh, their uh, about to leave uh, this this citadel that's on this mountaintop just north of Bryn Shander. And uh, you guys head kind of out the uh, front door uh, with Clarion. And Clarion kind of just looks at all of you and he's like, well, are you all ready? Let's go. That's actually a good question. Where are we going? Did uh, we decide that already? Callist, Callista <laughs> asked if I could drop you by Bryn Shander. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wasn't really listening most of the time because I was, you know, pacing. Good to know. He looks at you awkwardly for a second and then just what what is wrong with your hair well, what oh, and I uh, try to look up but I, I look at it, it because <laughs> we see it yeah you guys are, are you yeah you guys can you guys can okay. see it it almost looks like he tried to hide it but it's it keeps on like popping out for some reason it, it makes itself known and as it does you guys see you guys hear the familiar call of the raven as it flies down and rests back on Moby's shoulder. Ah! I give him a little tickle under the <laughs> in the thing. Moby! Hey, buddy. It, it looks at you and he's like, try not to get me killed this time, Moby. Um, you know, I, I, I understand that you feel that it's amusing to have me just reappear every morning. <laughs> but it's there's a lot that goes into that. You must understand. You guys just hear all these. You guys all just hear these squawks of this raven, as it just is communicating with Moby. But you guys have no idea <laughs> what's going nope, on. I don't understand at all. <laughs> Joyful, the little thing has returned. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Glad he has his friend back. Well, didn't you need some food for one of the Griffinlings? Yes, I did. Little Salim needs needs to eat. Well, there appears to be a raven on Moby's shoulder. <laughs> you know, my baby boy, he's a vegetarian. What does that even mean? So he only eats people who eat plants? He <laughs> <laughs> uh, doesn't eat people at all. I mean, not yet, anyway. Okay. All right. It's Clarion kind of looks looks well. No, no matter. It, are, are you all ready? Yes. Mm, okay. Yes. I Clarin give him a stank look. <laughs> <laughs> Clarion looks over at you, Callista, and he's like giving you that look. Like I don't know what I did to her, <laughs> but she hates me. Callista <laughs> returns the look. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Clarion just kind of runs his hands through his hair. Kind of, he's got the whole like Justin Bieber like uh, crossover oh, haircut God. on the front, and he kind of like moves it over a little bit. Uh, and he transforms into this know. massive silver dragon and scoops all of you up into his 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 hands and takes off. You hear the flapping of these massive wings as he takes off, heads back down, uh, gliding towards Bryn Shander. Uh, Lachlan, you're holding on for dear life as the cold <laughs> air just blows through uh, your hair and just, just you, don't look um, down. Moby, uh, the, the, it's blowing your hair around like crazy and you keep on seeing that, that tuft of black hair kind of show up in your peripheral vision every now and then and you quickly grab okay. it. <laughs> yeah. Why well, do you grab it? I'm going to like pick out one strand and just kind of try to pull it out. Pull it out? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You pull it out. It goes in it. A little bit of sting as you, uh, you yank that, that hair out of your head. <laughs> Can Molten rip the one out of the back of his head that he saw the other day when he was walking behind him? No, it was the same. It was the same one. Uh, oh, same this, one. this is the same strand right now. Yeah. Um, you guys are uh, headed back, and uh, Clarion um, drops you back off in front of Bryn Shander. And he's like, he, as, as he sets you down, he keeps his dragon form. Just like, I bid you farewell. Remember, you can use that stone if you need to reach me. Um, I've got some frost giants I need to take care of. Thank you. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he, he smiled a little bit when you said good luck, and then as soon as you said jerk, he was just going, oh. Aww. <laughs> Back to where he was. And I forgot I liked him. <laughs> Contact us if you see that creepy Zulkin guy. Uh, I will. Thank you. I will. Uh, be safe. Always, 
always take a peek over your shoulder just in case. And he takes his wings, opens them up, flaps up, takes off from you. you uh, this big gust of snow and just wind from the just massive wings just kind of blows through your uh, everybody's hair. And he flies on up <coughs> as he <laughs> heads on up. I like him. He's a good <laughs> sort. <laughs> yes, you know Ninja. Like Ninja. Stuff. In the couple weeks that you've been gone, they did make friends with a adult silver dragon named Clarion. So, yes, and uh, he takes off, and you can see his uh, image just kind of uh, disappear in the distance, heading back towards his uh, citadel. And you guys find yourself just a few hundred feet from the southwest gate of Bryn Shander. I'm going to take you guys back over to that map. Um, if you're not already there, you guys are already there. I had the Citadel up for everybody at home. But you guys are up here at Bryn Shander. Calista's going to start heading towards, was it like the palace or the <clears throat> keep or whatever? Um, who are you, who are you looking for? Are you looking for... Like the the leader lady? Devessa. Uh, Devessa was at the palace the last time <laughs> yeah. you guys left. And um, sh the Sheriff Markham, you can probably assume, maybe at the town hall in his office or... or even walking who, around. Who was it that we had to talk to to confirm or whether we're doing it or not? Devessa uh, or Markham? Markham seemed to be the one with the authority to to, to do that. Okay. Uh, it, under Duvessa's, you know, Duvessa was right. the one who gave you that letter about her aunt having a ship. And that letter was given to you, so you guys can you guys have that in your possession. So, mm -hmm. I, I believe it was, I it, it was in Waterdeep. Was yeah, the she... dancing wave outside Waterdeep, mm -hmm. Captain Nerva Cold Water. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll go find Markham then. Okay. Um, so you guys head, uh, head your way towards the town, um, the town hall. Uh, I go with him, but hang back a little, <laughs> kind of keep a low profile. Okay. On near the Actually, town hall. <laughs> uh, Mulfin is, is gonna try to slip away as well. Okay, Mulfin, go ahead what? and make Where a uh, stealth check. This is this is um, interesting. Dang! I see them. I see Mulfin at least, because my passive is seventeen. Yes. Um, you you managed to slip uh, out of. No one else notices, but Diana, you do notice uh, as Mulfin is trying to slink back and slip away into one of the alleyways as you guys are walking. Um, is there anything uh, that you would be doing when I'll you see just, this? You know, creep back and grab him by the collar. Okay, uh, Diana what... kind of drifts back a little bit and grabs you, uh, Mulfin. Where are you going? Uh, Rose of Gold. Thank you for the follow. We appreciate that. Welcome to the adventure. <laughs> Welcome. Mulfin sorry, turns with his eye. There's a cucumber for you for, for joining the adventure. Sorry about that, Mulfin. <laughs> Apparently there's a cucumber somewhere, but I am I am merely looking for the blacksmith shop. Why? Well, I pull out the broken dagger. Well, I only have the broken dagger that I can actually use that Lachlan gave me, so I'm going to see about obtaining another one. You had to sneak off for that? No, I was just turning down this alleyway to go look for it. Insight. Okay. <laughs> oh, are you lying, Mulfin? Or are you oh, telling the wait. truth? If you're lying, go ahead and make a deception <laughs> check for us. There, there is no point. I even I could what use about? it. Maybe I could nat twenty it. Uh, it's uh, so I will say. Uh, you get the sense that he's being honest about where he's going, but not why. Mulfin, does this have anything to do with Zulkin's dagger? No, not nothing, nothing whatsoever. Mulfin. Mulfin, <laughs> did I tell you about the time that I was interrogating a guy and I had my griffin eat his eye? <laughs> <laughs> Mulfin, you look down at the little baby griffin in Diana's hands. <laughs> So, so you mean the little tiny creature that only eats fruits and vegetables? It's something tells me that's not on the up and up. It's a recent lifestyle choice. <laughs> 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 if 
Where are you going? <laughs> what are you doing with Zulkin's dagger? There are things that must be attended to with this item. As what Calista does that said, mean? Well, as Callista said, it is best for you and Lachlan not to be involved. But... I mean, not to hold the dagger, not to attune to it, but, like, my life might be tied to this thing. I think I need to know, at least if you're going to destroy it or mess with it. We've already attempted to destroy it. It is not working. Given that talking can maybe... Yeah, because I wanted to talk to them before we were getting there. (laughs) Well, um, go ahead. Everybody make perception checks, uh, other than Diana and Mulfin. Sure. (laughs) Uh, Lachlan, I'm going to give you advantage on this because you said you were hanging back a little bit. So you're probably yeah. closer to them. Um, Callista, Moby, um, you're kind of just walking together. You don't really notice or hear what say, what, is, what is being said. Lachlan, you can hear the conversation. Well, um, I can't wait to see the Vesser again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're actually going to see Markham, but sure. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll hold mine and Moby's conversation. You guys can continue. Okay. Uh, Lachlan, if there's something Callista wants to say, but... Lachlan, hearing what is going on between uh, Diana's, Diana has her hand on uh, Mulfin's collar. Is there anything that you would be uh, saying or doing uh, in response to this? I just kind of walk up with like my hands in my pockets and like peek around, like what you doing? <laughs> Are you guys fighting? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you guys fighting? <laughs> um, Molfin, you might no. be uh, you might be muted. There you go. In thieves can't. In thieves Molfin can't. said, "says well, I was attempting to wander off on my own, and somebody happened to catch me." <laughs> so Diana, you have no idea what he just said, but Lachlan heard every word. <laughs> hey, I can, you know, I can't understand you, but I know that you're talking about me. So I apologize. I got a little distracted and slipped into primordial. It happens all the time at my age. Um. Oh the- dang it! I only know celestial and infernal. <laughs> <laughs> I only know. <laughs> I only have a Mercedes BMW. <laughs> <laughs> I only know five languages. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go take care of my business. And Mom's going to try to pull her hand, uh, Diana's hand off his collar. Contest my strength then. Oh, here we go. Oh, Diana's going to try to keep a hold of and, you. And she's going to roll a three. Oh, oh he used his fist <laughs> foot on you. You have uh, a nat 20, just saying. I have a nat 20? Yeah. yeah. Remember, you got the award of the nat 20. Uh, Even if I rolled oh, well, three. you know what? He still, he still <laughs> fails because he rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> So Molfin is trying to shake himself free and he, he just, uh, Diana, you're just, even though it's like not, you're not even like really trying to hold on to him. <laughs> He's, he just can't get away from you. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> um, I, I am picturing I the classic, uh, like... You know, little tiny small person fighting a giant with just a hand on the forehead and the person swinging and can't reach. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't even know what I want to interrogate you about anymore. Um, This is just so funny. Um, It's just... Is this going to screw me at the end of it? Is it it gonna? Because I need to know if it does. No, it's... What what should be happening? It should have no impact on you whatsoever. I don't like this. Not at all. I think if anything happens to the dagger, I should know about it. But, but you know... I, I will be the first to tell you if anything is going to happen to this dagger. Alright, and be careful, okay? Zulkin knows where we are. He knows where the dagger is. 
don't, I don't know, be ready for anything. We don't know what he's capable of. Your concern is most appreciated. Yeah, well, you're like, you know, like a grandfather to me, so... <laughs> In your <I'm> place! place. <laughs> <laughs> Great grandfather. Great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch. Put in the family zone. That's even worse than the friend zone. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, so, Diana, are you loosening your uh, grip on Mulfin and allowing him to... <laughs> I'll let him go. Scoot and away. Go jog. Oh, wait, 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 before that happens, um, <laughs> um, short, sure, let's cast, oh, well, it only lasts one minute, but, I mean, let me see here, um, I'll cast, uh, Shield of Faith is up to 10 minutes. I'll cast Shield of Faith so he has some protection just in case trouble starts. Oh, so so you now have um, <laughs> I think a plus 2 tier armor. Very yeah, nice. plus 2 tier armor. Alright, so, so uh, Mulfin, before if you Diana... you something, which I know you're gonna, and, you know, get killed nearly, you, you, you might, they might miss you better. <laughs> Mulford is having trouble processing now because he got family zoned and now he's being helped. He's confused. <laughs> okay, if you if you fall, you don't have like a life alert to let me know. I gotta I gotta <gasps> assure that your old man knees don't give out on you and you can walk. <laughs> you don't hurt yourself when you fall. <laughs> <laughs> Mulfin is shocked. He doesn't know what to say. This is the first time he's been speechless ever. He's always got something for everything, but this has broken him. I want a minor illusion oh, like steam I'm coming off his head. <laughs> Lachlan, minor illusions is <laughs> steam coming off of Mulfin's head. <laughs> There's a little bit of snow falling, and as it as it hits uh, Mulfin's head, it just immediately melts and starts to run down. <laughs> We'll see ya. And I'm gonna go run and catch up with the other two who are having their own talk. So, d despite the uh, turn of the conversation, Mulfin, you do feel like you're protected um, with the incantation and the spell that Diana had cast on you as she loosened her grip on your on your collar, and you find yourself uh, being able to move again. <laughs> Look over at Lachlan. That's a lot of good you were. <laughs> I asked you for help. Seems like you had it under control. Anyway, keep an eye on them. I'll meet up with you when I'm assuming they're going to the courthouse or something to meet with Markham. Yeah, I'm going to be a little careful around there. Do what you need. I shall catch up with you shortly. Good luck. Be safe. Hmm. Well, apparently I'm going to, going to be one way or another after some incantation she did, so... I think she likes you. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sense about people. <laughs> I'm so confused. Lachlan, I really wonder if you were watching the same conversation I was involved in. <laughs> I, it feels as though I've been banished to some strange realm where only close familial members are kept. <laughs> I start moonwalking back to the park. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Moby, Callista, you guys kind of uh, were a, a little bit ahead, and Lachlan and Diana eventually catch back up to you as you guys are approaching the town hall. Um, you can see that a lot of the town hall had cleared out overnight. There's uh, maybe a couple of stragglers uh, as you enter, uh, people just kind of uh, 
taking advantage of the space that was available for them to run into while the uh, <laughs> while the attack was happening. But um, see that they're probably almost worn out their welcome for for this uh, period of time. You can see one of the guards that you were familiar with standing over by the door um, that leads down to uh, Markham's uh, office. I want to turn to the party. <laughs> Just to be clear, we are declining the badges, right? I think we have to get yeah. out of here, all things considered, right? Moby? I didn't want any part of it to begin with, so absolutely. Okay. okay. I'll go down. Okay. Are the rest of you going with her? Yes. Mmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no. No, it was just going to be Markham. No thanks. No. Yeah, I'm hanging out with Moby and avoiding the that place. I have a history there. Did uh, Callista need to talk to anybody? I thought you were gonna. I thought you that was. To talk to some... Yeah, that was it. I wanted to be sure because Callista was gonna go tell him no, but she wanted to be sure that everybody was on the same page. Okay. Okay. Um, you guys make your way uh, to the to the first guard and. Um, it was the guy that was uh, uh, woke up naked on the floor oh. that you guys had had seen before. You kind of walk up, and he's almost kind of embarrassed as you walk up. <laughs> I make sure I keep my gaze <laughs> above his chest. <laughs> he kind of, as you guys walk, he recognizes you, and he kind of just like nervously like looks down and then looks off to the side, <laughs> like he's like, <laughs> like he doesn't want. <laughs> He doesn't want to address you, but he's giving you guys pretty much letting you go down the steps. I just, I don't say anything. I just <laughs> nod and go down. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> so I'm he, sorry, I had to set him up for that. <laughs> this show brought to you tonight by the PG 13 rating. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so, so you guys start heading down these wooden steps. Um, to the uh, the lower office door, it's, which is which is cracked open just a little bit. You guys do hear some conversation coming from outside the door. Um, I'll knock on the open door. Okay, as you knock, it kind of drifts open just a little bit with a little bit of a, a, a creak of the hinges under the cold temperatures. Um, you just hear, uh, "Come in." I'll push Close the door in. open. Uh, you walk in and you can see uh, Markham is uh, sitting beside his desk and he's just like looking at it frustratedly. And he's like, "Oh, they." Went through my things. Look, I it took my spare money pouch. They spread these things oh. all across the floor. My goodness, I tell you. Oh, I am. When I find that guy, I am gonna. Oh, I'm gonna find a way to string him up. I swear it. Calissa's trying not to smirk. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, a um, there's a couple other guards in the room the female guard that you guys remember and a couple others are there there one is kind of like going through kind of like investigating like the 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 cell to see how exactly the escape happened um a couple of them are like working working that and the other one is just trying to help uh sheriff markham kind of clean up all of his belongings and kind of organizing things uh, uh from from his desk I didn't have time to do all go through all this stuff last night. There was just so much to do. And Devessa wanted to have dinner. Oh my goodness, so much work to do. He th he throws a couple pieces of you know paper and parchment down on his desk and says, "What? Oh, <clears throat> what? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It's been a it's been a long long morning already. Uh, what can, have you have you come to a decision? Yes. Um. Due to some recent developments on on our end, we find it impertinent that we leave as soon as possible. We will not be unable to stay. Well, I However, Clarion is out with his dwarves looking for the giants for you. Well, that's good to hear, although I must be honest and say I'm a little disappointed that you are not willing to accept my offer. He goes back to kind of organizing some of his things. You hear him like slam one of the doors on his desk. Uh, <laughs> I would like to ask, however, what was that, Diane? I said, I'm sorry, and I want to give him a hug. 
<laughs> you just kind of wrap your arms around him and he just like stands there. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> Back yeah. off. You know, He's just like shoulder pat. Just looks at you with this awkward look. <clears throat> I Markham, I would like to ask, however, as seeing as we have helped out here, I was hoping you would be so generous to offer us some horses or some carts. We need a fast means of getting out of here for your safety and ours. Well, as disappointed as I am that you not wear the badge of Bryn Shander's forces, I believe that due to your bravery and the things that I've seen from your defense of our wonderful city, that I could make that happen. I thank you. Oh, they stole that too? What? <laughs> oh! Slam, slams another door shut. <laughs> what, what are you missing? Oh my goodness, they stole things out. Oh, like look, they they stole my spare dagger that I had under here just in case I needed it. What is that? Oh, that guy. I tell you, when I when I find him, and he just You're go, he just goes like this. <laughs> Just, uh, just throwing it out there, everyone has a right to a fair and expedient trial, and um, that uh, punishments should not outweigh the crime. And I finger guns. Well, hopefully, no hopefully you won't be there when I find him. Hopefully I will. <laughs> 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 and then uh, you hear one of the other guards uh, call over. Uh, uh, Sheriff, uh, it, it, it's, it almost seems like some, somebody must have picked this lock. It doesn't seem like it was open from the inside. Calista's I mean, now 100% sure who stole uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we had help. Hmm. <laughs> I did tell you to double up on security here. <sighs> I know you did. Well, it was it was hard for us to double up on security when we had frost giants breathing down our necks. I know, but it was the perfect yeah. distraction. Mm. So it seems. Mm. Look, that that parchment is ruined. It got wet. Somebody stepped on it. I, I, how am I supposed to file these? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you poor poor filing system. Oh no. <laughs> He continues like help uh, the other guard is like like working working as hard as he can to like put all this stuff together. You hear uh, the sheriff eventually. Like, no, you got to put them in the correct order, sir. Come on. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> he's he's Markham. he's he's extremely frustrated with life right now. <laughs> maybe maybe you should take a break for a minute and help expedite us out of here. Yes. Uh, uh, you're right. You're right. Um, you, he goes over the over to the door, and he's like, "Aaron, Aaron," and calling up, calling up the steps. Aaron, are you up there? Aaron. <laughs> and then you eventually. I think he's a bit embarrassed. Eventually, you hear a, uh, uh, "Yes, sir," <laughs> down down the steps, and uh, he's like, "Would you, would you gather some horses? We need. Uh, what do we need? Five? Was that the total number yeah. of your party? We need, we need five. Cl Clarion's not here, is he? He he had he had other arrangements. That is right. <clears throat> we need five horses ready, uh, ready to go immediately. He's like, oh, can we ride, ride horses? <laughs> <laughs> I think you can. It'd be really awkward, but yeah, you can ride horses. It's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as Aaron kind of disappears, um, that is a good point for us to go ahead and take a break. Uh, for yeah! the evening. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I would just like to toss out Clint agrees with me. Uh, the chat agrees with me. Clint is not useless. He's not useless, but like, is he a badass, <laughs> though? It's, it's the chat's mission to figure out the most useless Avenger when we're on break. <laughs> <laughs> the most useless Avenger. I'm just going to toss out Steve Rogers for the chat because, hey, I got a shield. 
he's hey. the leader. He's a super soldier, and he's cute. You need Steve Rogers. <laughs> and he's cute. <laughs> Well, thank you, uh, everybody who's tuning in to uh, to uh, join us here for episode 21 of Storm King's Thunder. We thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Thank you guys for being so uh, so awesome in Twitch chat. I'm sorry about Moobot um, destroying your uh, your chat your chat there, Ninja. Um, I I eased up I eased up on Moobot. I'm not sure why he's being so hard on you tonight. So. Um, <laughs> we're going to take a quick uh, five to ten minute break to uh, get some drinks, uh, snacks, and uh, use the restroom and things like that. So um, if you guys would please, please stick around, enjoy us for enjoy this for the second half of our adventure tonight. Um, as Mofin does a little dance for us uh, before, <laughs> before we go to commercial break. <laughs> oh my goodness. There, there we go. We're going to bust out a bust out a dance party before we leave. <laughs> so you guys stick with us. We'll, uh, we'll be right back in just a few.
All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're so glad that you're tuning in tonight to uh, our Proficiency Bonus channel. This is Storm King's Thunder, episode 21. Uh, right now, our party is... Uh, they headed back to Bryn Shander, um, trying to uh, get some transportation set as they plan to uh, head on out. Um, and uh, the last we left off, the uh, sheriff was calling up to, to one of his guards to get some horses ready. But as that is happening, uh, Mulfin, you are scooting through the streets of Bryn Shander here this, uh, in these early morning hours. Um, you, uh, find a small shop, um, with a, uh, sign on the front that says, uh, Black Iron Blades, as you have been searching for a smithy, and this seems to be the first place that you've come across that would, uh, fit the bill. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Mulfin will, uh, go ahead and walk in and seek the purveyor of said establishment. Okay, as you walk in, you so a rather small uh, uh, building as you walk in. Um, you do notice uh, looking around you, um, just just the the smell kind of overwhelms you of just just smoke and um, you know work being done in this establishment. Uh, you see that there is a, uh, a younger girl uh, behind the counter, um, and you can hear. Uh, there's a kind of an open door behind the the, the main counter. Uh, you can hear that there's like the, just the, the forging of weapons happening. Uh, sounds like just a hammer hitting hitting metal onto uh, an anvil uh, in the back room. Um, <clears throat> as you walk in, she almost kind of she really kind of ignores you at first, and she's kind of like uh, putting some things out and setting some things up. You can see that a lot of a lot of the area around you there's some just standard adventuring gear that are there's some you know hemp and rope that's, you know, hanging from the wall. A lot of these other different gear that's there. <laughs> Malfa <Malfamal. clears throat> Excuse me up there. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, welcome. Can I help you? Yes, I, I am looking for something rather specific. Uh, I seek a dagger, but more than an actual piece, I'm looking for Almost a, let us call it a piece of costume equipment. And I'm going to give them a rough description of what Zolkin's dagger looks like. Uh, she... Just the color of the hilt and not the gems and everything, just the basic, you know, shape and color of the hilt, pommel, and blade. Mm. Well, she kind of looks at you awkwardly at first as you kind of describe this. What is... We um we really only deal with standard uh, standard equipment here. Um, let me uh, let me go to the, let me go into the back for a second and let me let me ask Garn if he's got anything uh, back there that 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 fits this description. Um, and you see her uh, her long dark hair kind of pulled back into kind of a ponytail, uh, moves back uh, into the the back room, uh, which there's no door on this. Like you can kind of see back there that there's another man back there kind of working. Um, uh, kind of just casting a, a sword into the fire and bringing it out. It's, you know, beaming red as he pulls it out, puts it on the uh, anvil and just starts like kind of hammering it away uh, to, to try to make it into a, into a blade. Um, rather, he seems to be going rather quickly too. Like he's, he's making this thing fast. He knows what he's doing. Uh, she goes back there and you see that they're having some conversation and he hands her a couple of things as he takes a break from, from forging the sword and she comes back and she sets these two daggers out on the counter and um, go ahead and make a perception check, uh, Molfin, as okay, these, uh, these daggers. Because this is important, I'm going to burn my DM's inspiration on this. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Um, you, as you're looking at the daggers, there's, there's, not, there's only minor differences between the two. And it, neither of them look anything like what Zulkin's dagger looks like. <laughs> I mean, they're very simple daggers. Um, it, but you do notice that um, they have a, a distinct marking on them um, that each of them have at the bottom. It's a, it's a uh, it just looks like a simple black sword. That's it's it's kind of jet black in the blade. It's kind of carved in, kind of like almost like his marking that he that he leaves in his in his equipment. 
but you can tell with that with that roll this stuff is really cheaply made <laughs> like it's not as good as some of the other daggers that you've that you've seen it's not as good as the one I broke on the ground. <laughs> it's, well, which which one was which one was that Lachlan that he broke on the ground? Was that the one that you had from like the start, or that was like one of my just original daggers that yeah. I had? Yeah, it's actually not even. It's worse <laughs> off than that. Yes. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, neither of these match the uh, specifications for the project I am working on. I'm sorry. Our, our our daggers are merely for, for for, uh, our daggers aren't for ceremonial things. And you were the... is there anyone in town who would sell such an item? Hmm. Well, I guess you could check Rendarl's Emporium. They might have something like that. Although they deal in uh, very expensive products, I don't. I don't know if they would have the kind of dagger that you're looking for. Um, but you could check. <sighs> It may be worth the journey. Uh, could you point me in a direction, dear? Oh, oh yes, and she just kind of points. It's, it's it's off in that direction. You you you'll find it. Trust me, you'll find it. Uh, it's it, when you when you when you come across it, you'll see all the fancy clothing in the window. Oh. Oh. Thank you. I shall take my leave then. <laughs> Muffin will trundle off in the direction they're pointing. Uh. Molten trying to kind of, find Rendell's Emporium. <laughs> Molfin kind of trundles off, and as he does so, uh, we go back to the other group, and uh, you guys um, head on out the front and notice that a lot of the guards have already uh, got some horses out there, um, some some just standard riding horses that are ready to go, and one of them comes up to you and just, like, uh, you just got to be really careful with these guys out here. I mean, uh, the, the the horseshoes that we put on these guys are good, but if you, if you go off a trail, it would be very hard for them to make their way uh, through some of the deep snow and the icy conditions. Thank you. Okay. Thank mm. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Make sure you give them lots of rest, too. Of course. Do you have anything size appropriate? <laughs> Uh, what <laughs> what exactly are you looking for? I mean, these are these are some of the best horses of all of Bryn Gender. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure they're the best, but I mean, they're like five times the size of me. Uh, to, would, would you oh, like to just maybe you know more? <laughs> he kind of chuckles a little bit. And he's like, "Would you like me to give you a boost?" <laughs> oh no, I'm asking if you have any like <laughs> ponies or Shetland horses or anything. Ah, uh, sh it was just a query. So I mean, I, I'm not fussy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm afraid that we don't we don't have those here in Brinchander. Uh, uh, maybe okay. somewhere on the outskirts of one of the other ten towns, or even uh, Fire Shear may have some there. Um, well, then a boost is sounding pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you're getting ready to get boosted onto this horse, Moby. Oh, he touches my butt, doesn't he? <laughs> 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 a firm squeeze. As you're uh, ready to do this, um, you hear your raven on your shoulder say, Oh, no. What, the horse? Yeah, I tried to get him to change it, but they wouldn't. It's all they've got. And then you, you see somebody running up the street towards you, Moby, uh, and it's the priest from the temple that you were praying with <gasps> yesterday. Oh, do I see him? Yeah, yeah, you see him. He's coming up. Um, he's kind of looks really freaked out. Like, he looks a, a bit scared. Okay, Diana's face falls. Um, and you guys remember, you guys remember him as uh as uh Delvin, Delvin Ludwig, the the priest of the the temple, the house of the triad. <clears throat> and he when starts, he approaches, maybe he's like, "It's the horse thing, isn't it? Like the size relation just doesn't work, does it? I, 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 I should have got a pony. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you you you've got to come quickly. You got to you you got to you got to come. You got to come with me quickly." Quickly, yeah, yeah, you, you can, you can. He points to Diana. You, you, you too. You, you can, you can all come. You can come. 
And he oh, kind of, oh, he kind of, almost like he's almost like 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 kind of like grabbing you and kind of like almost like pulling you to to follow him, Moby. I go. I run. I'm off. Let's go. Am I? St- Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, yeah. Should we take the? I'm so conflicted. The horse. So, like, <laughs> As you guys are starting to get pulled away, and the guards are like, uh, uh, sh- uh, "Should should we should we hold I, them?" I turn back. We... I grab my horse. Okay. And, uh, no, I'm not grabbing my horse. Uh, it's too hard to get on. I'll go with him. <laughs> All right. So Moby is following uh, following the priest. The the one guard is just standing there with uh, Moby's reins of his horse, just like standing there, like. Is, is he is is he coming back? I I don't I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I just I kind of t- <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna come back just you know hold those for a minute. Um, hold so, your horses. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the one the one guard looks at you and he goes ah very funny. I quit. I quit. <laughs> and you guys are all headed uh, in the direction. Um, and he is leading you back towards the direction of the house of the triad. Um, as you start heading down there, you see a figure standing outside in the street, just staring upwards towards the roof of the house of the triad. And as you guys start to approach, um, uh, Delvin starts to slow down a bit, uh, you know, it's, his priestly vestiges kind of like kind of soaking in the in the the snow that's on the ground a little bit and he starts to slow down and he points up towards the roof of the house of the triad and he says just just look look at it and you guys all kind of like look up and on the roof are all these ravens sitting are like what? ravens sitting just like they sit like just how birds sit on like telephone wires they're just lining the temple roof all around you brought me here to look at birds i mean i love birds don't get me wrong but... <laughs> this is a peculiar omen i don't get it can i turn to the raven on my shoulder and be like what does this mean exactly can I um, roll a religion check to see if it's an omen? Also, sure, sure. not to interrupt Moby. But... Yeah, yeah. Are they with you? I... Um, Moby, uh, the Raven looks at you and it's like he's kind of like, uh, yes, Moby. Um, she's here. Who? Who's here? What are you What are you talking about? The the queen is here. Oh. And I straighten up my my coat. <laughs> brush my black hair back. <laughs> is that a good thing or is this unusual? I, I mean, I'm new to this stuff. I, I don't know. Um, the Delvin uh, kind of looks at you all and looks down at you, Moby, and he's like, when you were praying yesterday, what did you see? Mm, did nothing. You, did 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 you did you hear from someone by chance? No, I was more concerned about the, the hand on my shoulder. Um, I didn't do anything. Can I insight, Moby. Sure. <laughs> Can I swell because I was there and Oh I need to use my inspiration oh. for this one. Diana, you You're not really you for a you're, split you're... Diana just got like I don't know. She got distracted by all the uh ravens on the roof. <laughs> I'm the 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 um Diana, you believe Possibly that this could be some kind of omen, but you're not 100%, 100% positive. Even though that was a good good roll, uh, you're really not sure. You haven't ever seen anything like this. Um, do I do I know of any raven oriented religions or ones that use bird symbolism that I could um, link this to? You you have heard of a raven, uh, uh, the raven. What's called the Raven Queen. Um, okay who is actually um, the queen of... Is it the Underdark? Like JJ? 
It's it's the underdog. It's, it's like. really it's really like the the in between, more so like passing yeah. the souls through yeah. to the Purgatory. next place. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like Are we um, yeah. Sounds like basically it's kind of like she's she's not really purgatory. It's kind of like it's not a place of in waiting. It's kind of like a place where. Um, the souls of the dead are transported into their next destination. It's not like a. It's not like you're physically waiting to get there. It's like the actual travel to where you're headed after you uh, leave. Like a Mitsubishi courier plane. express. Yeah, yeah. Like send souls in, send souls out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and the Raven Queen is basically uh, the queen, uh, the the ruler of that realm. Um, do I know if she's good or bad? Um, or you neutral? you you know that she's pretty much neutral, meaning um, as long as as long as death makes its way the way it should, and people don't cheat death. Um, I mean, death is something that comes to all. And so Diana she, thinks it's so. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, she's she's you you would feel like she is right down the middle, like no, not really good, not really bad per se. Okay, so would this to Diana mean that like death is near, or that's how I'm interpreting it? it um, if I can't uh, help out, uh, mm -hmm. Ninja from chat says the name of the god of the of death is long forgotten but she is called the raven queen she is the spinner of fate and the patron of winter she marks mm -hmm. the end of each mortal life and mourners call upon her during funeral rites mm -hmm. in the hope that she will guard the departed from the curse of undeath and that's and that's where you've heard of it before thank you ninja for for chiming in with that that's where you've heard of this before in funeral rites okay um basically when somebody would recite re, you do a funeral we'd say we'd uh, hope the raven queen guides you to your next destination you know, that's, okay. that's, you know, things like that kind of come up. Like Charon. So, yeah. Y'all, yeah. like, <laughs> death is here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know physically here, but someone, something. This is bad. This is bad. Unless we're having a funeral. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you guys are all staring at these ravens, um, Mulfin. You find yourself staring into these glorious windows um, to see these elegant robes and clothing that are hanging in this emporium that you've just uh, approached. Um, it's a very large establishment, probably the largest trade house in all of Bryn Shander that you've passed so far. But it looks very upscale and ritzy. Um, <laughs> Looks like things might in here might cost a pretty penny, and <laughs> and you prepare yourself, getting yourself ready, <laughs> straightening up your uh, clothing from making sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> making... I'll just make sure the mustache is proper and <laughs> making sure uh, Diana didn't rip your collar as <laughs> as she was grabbing hold of you earlier. <laughs> I wonder where they got off to. Uh, either way. And uh, go in and try to find a uh, clerk or representative to inquire about the same thing. <laughs> right. um, you walk in and you can see that there is uh, several different items uh, in this in this place. Um, what's really cool is it looks like that um, the original area that you walked into was was originally much smaller and has been built onto over time. The you can kind of just ascertain just by looking around that this might have been one of the original buildings uh, in Bryn Shander um, when it was first uh, constructed and just this person just kept on adding on to it um, with uh, with the money that they've attained through their trade that they do their business um, <clears throat> um, you can see that there is a, uh, a half elf male um, uh, kind of just walking around, kind of tidying up the the store, kind of like you know, uh, taking a collar of of a of a long tailed shirt that's on this uh, kind of like wooden mannequin, and he's kind of just straightened it up just a bit. Um, there's other people like walking all around the shop. Um, a lot of them look like the people that are in this store are, look like they're pretty well off when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to their their amount of gold that they carry in their pockets. Uh, as they're walking around, just kind of 
just kind of window shopping, so to speak, as they're walking around. <laughs> and, uh... Mulfam will approach the, uh, half-elven, uh, person in... Greetings, uh, I am hoping you might be able to help me with a rather specific item I am looking for. Hmm, he doesn't even look at you, he's just, like, continuing to, like, brush off the, uh, the, the, the coat that he's working on, and... Uh, and what would this specific item be? Uh, I'm looking for a ceremonial or costume dagger. Once more, describe the general look of Zulkin's dagger. <clears throat> hmm. Uh, do you have an example? Do you have something I could look at? No, 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 I do not, unfortunately. I saw it once, and hmm. uh, one of the younglings wanted one. I was hoping to find a costume piece for him. It's still a little young, in my opinion. Mm. Only a mere 35 years and not quite ready for their own dagger yet. Uh, fair enough. Uh, well, uh, um, with with just that description, I can take you over to our ceremonial dagger. So just this way. And he kind of like leads you uh, into another room that goes off to the side. And you can see there's a, a, a nice uh, glass case over there. And you can see that there are several different daggers and knives and things uh, within this case. A lot of them are very elegant looking uh, ceremonial daggers. But as you're kind of uh, looking through, none of them seems to um, look exactly like the one that you have. Um, nothing, uh, nothing overly close or anything that could be a... Uh... Uh, go to make a perception check for me. Uh. Oh. Um, as you're kind of heading towards the end, uh, one kind of catches your eye. Uh, it has some of the same kind of like gem formations that you have on Zulkin's dagger, but the serrated blade of the dagger itself is not the same. So... Uh, while the the designs and things may be kind of similar, it's probably the closest one that you're that you're going to be able to find in this place. How much for that uh, fancy looking piece with the uh, serrated blade on the end? Oh, oh, this this one on the end here. Hmm. Whoa, that's a that's a fine looking dagger there. Hmm. Excuse me while the DM looks up the price. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that one there. That one there is a beautiful piece indeed. That one's going to cost you around 50 gold pieces. Oh. Let me go and collect the coin from my... idiot who has a bag of money who is currently over speaking with Sheriff Markham, and I shall be back with you shortly. <laughs> uh, uh, fair enough. Should I should I hold this for you? Oh, yes, please. If you wouldn't mind, I shouldn't be more than. Mm. Uh, Who am I holding? How, how far is it? How, how far is this from the sheriff's office? We are uh, visiting, so it's merely right across the market square there. Ah, beautiful. So shouldn't be more than, I'd say, ten fifteen minutes. And it is Molfin. Ah, uh, Molfin. I I will Sonic Abrantos Wispendel Green East at your service. <laughs> Uh, yes, Molfin would have been fine. <laughs> as, as, he takes, as he takes the dagger and he kind of walks back uh, behind the uh, the counter, and there's a there's just a, a, another female human there that uh, that is kind of just kind of standing behind the uh, the counter that he kind of you can see that he hands it off to her and is giving her instructions to hold it for you. Oh, thank you. We should be back shortly. Um, fair enough. We'll see you soon. And uh, as uh, Molfin makes his way outside, uh, um, as he walks outside, Molfin is going to cast Unseen Servant. Tell the servant to go in and try to lift the dagger, and then start <laughs> heading over towards the. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, as sends the him to find that, and then to come to the sheriff's office looking to deliver it, and is going to just walk over to the sheriff's office. Break somebody else out of jail. <laughs> um, do you do you have the description to unseen servant that you could put in the chat? Um, yeah, yeah, give me a second. I've got it. Uh, it'd just be easier to have it up in the chat. Yep. <laughs> uh, where are we? There we go. Is 
mindless shapeless form mindless shapeless form form some simple t simple tasks <laughs> Oh, Go pick up dagger, bring to a uh, sheriff's office. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, hey thank you so much uh for subscribing. I believe it's a barbarian. Thank you so much for the su subscription. We appreciate your support. Oh. Welcome to the adventure. Uh unseen servant. Yeah, so um <laughs> um all of a sudden <laughs> as Mulfin is walking across the market square. Um, let me make a roll real quick. Um, and, uh, I'm going to make sure to stay cause I just read it. I have to be within 60 feet of it. So yeah, as yeah. Mulfin sends him back in, you know, just very slowly walking on the staff, like a little man would <laughs> you're kind of sort of drawing it out a little more exaggerating yeah, exactly. a limp and everything <laughs> as you're going across like oh my goodness my old legs. <laughs> oh, your legs making me walk all over the place. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let me make a roll real quick uh, to see what exactly happens here. Because uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, so we'll leave would this be a time you would feel like using your net one? <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Yes. Yes, I do. I want to use my oh, nat one. Oh boy! I'm gonna use my nat one. Thank you, chat, for giving me that nat one two weeks ago. Oh, I appreciate that. It is now if... used, and um, all of a sudden. I don't know if that'll help me or hinder me, but hey. All of a sudden. <laughs> we might be battling the Raven Queen. <laughs> Mofin, as you are um, walking across, um, you all of a sudden <laughs> peer behind you, and the dagger that you were going to purchase is floating about three feet above the ground blade first towards you as it is just moving its way across the market square there's a couple of people that walk by and just like are just like oh. stunned looks on their face as this dagger just floats by um and it just makes its way towards you Mulfin will scroll it away uh with the other and all of a sudden, speed up the step to get to the sheriff's office a little quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, the old man limp is gone. <laughs> like insurance fraud. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> let's see, let's see Lockwood lift a fifty gold dagger like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead and make an. Uh, you can make an insight check to Mulfin. Uh, for me, as you uh, get your hands on this dagger, um, never Not mind. <laughs> <laughs> it it looks exactly like I described it to you, as you're <laughs> as you're headed over uh, to the uh, sheriff. As you head to to the sheriff's place, you can see that there are several guards holding some horses outside the front gate. Uh, some of them look like they're kind of impatiently like waiting for someone. Um, they're just kind of all standing around. Um, some of them feeding a little bit of grain and hay to the horses as they're waiting. It's... Do that, God. Where, where are the other... The two, two gnomes and two half-elven lasses? They were uh, supposed to be here talking with Markham. Ah, uh, the, the priest came running up here and drug him off. I think they were heading to the house of the triad. Ugh... Would you point an old gnome in that direction, and I'll go drag them back? Oh, yes. Yes, please. Tell them to hurry. Uh, they went down that way just a couple of blocks. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start down and eventually find his way to them whenever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we'll go back to the other group. Uh, you guys are kind of all still kind of huddling outside um, the temple. What would you guys like to do? I'm going to turn to the raven and be like, so what do, what do I do? Do I go inside? <laughs> um, I believe that would be the best bet. Um, so <laughs> when this happens, it's, it's it's very rare. Oh, I'm in trouble. I've done something wrong. Mm. Oh no, no, no. no, Moby, this is not something. This is not something bad. This is this is a good thing. I think. <laughs> 
I think I'm hearing this, I'm be like, oh, okay, guys, it's a good thing. Don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys it's are just you guys are just seeing this raven on his shoulder just squawking to him, while all these other ravens are just staring down at you. <laughs> Molly, what is this about? What, what's going on? I mean, I don't know, but apparently it's a good thing. So, being all chipper, Moby. maybe it's gonna stroll inside. Moby, Moby, now is not the time for your schizophrenia to be acting up. No. <sighs> I'm on my way in. Moby, I'll Moby, follow Moby, Moby, I don't know Moby, what's stop, going on. Moby, stop. But you, you just told me to go in. Them. They're not gonna be able to come with you. What do you mean? You're going to have to say goodbye. What are you what are you talking about goodbye? Moby, you are being chosen. The queen chosen is here. For what? Chosen for a task much great much greater than yourself. Why me? That's the same question all of us have. Why me? Why me? Why me? I've heard that question so many times from so many just like you, Moby. My goodness. I tell you what, it's always the same with you. <sighs> Moby, the queen is here. She needs you. She needs us. Okay. Something okay. big has happened. All right. I'm going to turn around to whoever may be following me. I'm right beside you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the raven was like squawking like really like, it was like, like he was just practically squawk barking right in Moby's ear this whole time as you guys were uh, headed up. And Moby Seeing turns around. Callista is right next to me. I'm just kind of going to reach up, grab her hand and be like, Callista, I really appreciate it, but this is something that I need to do on my own apparently. How long is it going to take? We need to get out of here. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know what's going on. But all I know is that it needs to be me. Why? What? That's exactly what I asked. I don't know. That's what I need to find out. So what, we're supposed to just wait here for you to come out? God knows when? We gotta get out of here, Moby. It's not safe for us to stay here. I need to do this. I swear I'll be like five minutes. It's okay. Oh my God. Can I incite him? Sure. I would also like to walk up. I'm not going to say anything. just want to be there. <laughs> Does he really mean it when he says he's only going to be five minutes? <laughs> Do you, uh... Are you I mean, trying to deceive or are you just not really? I don't know. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't, I mean... he doesn't really know. <laughs> And you're and you're kind of getting that vibe from him. He's not really a hundred percent sure what's Look, going on. I mean, it's probably going to take a little longer than five minutes, so I can try to deceive if you wish. Well, if it takes more than five minutes, I'm going in, and I will tell you that. Five minutes tops. That's all. If you're not out in five minutes, I'm dragging you out. In and out. I got it. Okay. I'll, I'll be there. Uh, Lachlan, I'll uh, just squeeze uh, his hand and be like, just be careful. Lachlan, anything from you? I mean, you know, well, it's not like Moby like falls into moats and, you know, almost dies or anything. He's a pretty, uh, pretty lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> At about... I think he'll be fine in there. Five minutes. He'll probably be back in three. At about I'm this time, gonna... you guys start, start to hear the uh, little pitter patter of a cane uh <laughs> as it approaches towards you guys uh, as it kind of hits the icy streets of Bryn Shander. uh Lachlan you kind of look over and you guys can see Mulfin is uh just just a few uh buildings down from you guys headed headed his way towards uh Mulfin you can see that there's some kind of conversation going on and you can see all these ravens atop the house of the triad as you approach <laughs> Diane, I was sorry to cut you off. You can go ahead if you uh, had know, something I, you were I doing. Just gonna, I was just going to, you know, pray and anoint Moby really quick after that uh, moat comment. <laughs> 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 
feel like a water breathing spell. <laughs> does have a cloak now. It's a prayer. You know? As long as he remembers to pull the hood up. <laughs> I'm gonna turn around to them and be like, five minutes. And then I'm gonna walk inside. Okay. I'm standing right outside the door and I'm counting five minutes. Moby, that... That's the Raven Queen, I think. I don't... It's her raven thing. Are you sure? You don't want anyone to go in with you? Like... I apparently can only be me. Oh, so this raven tells me. Are you dying? No, I feel perfectly fine. I, I'm a picture of health. <laughs> Everyone make a perception check, please. Wow. Oh. Nice. <laughs> we all know you lying. Uh, I have heart disease. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it, it's not that he's lying. You all notice that more of his hair has turned black since you guys like, have made what? your way to Bryn Shander. More of his hair <laughs> is changed to black. Five minutes. <laughs> This, uh, is Moby wearing armor? Nope. Nope. And at this point, would Mulfin have actually made it to the group at this point or no? Oh, yeah, yeah, you've made it to the group. You can see uh, Moby's got his hand on the, the temple door. He's getting ready to open it to walk inside. Hmm. Um, well, if, well, if you're heading in, it seems we're waiting outside for you. Hmm. Don't do anything foolish. Reach out and just sort of push the back of his head lightly. I want to pull out, I had in my bag, like a stuffed teddy bear from when we were looting houses. I want to kind of toss it his way and say, if anybody causes trouble, pull the stuffing out and throw it in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you, I'll, I'll make sure to do that. A very passive way to disarm somebody. I like it, you're learning, you're learning. <laughs> just for you cuz I'm gonna like cradle the bear and yeah look up at the ravens sitting along the uh, the edge of the temple and then just walk in uh, as you walk in uh, the temple door closes behind you um, there is a different atmosphere um, within the house of the triad than you remembered from before. Oh, I like what they've done with the place. Very niche. And it's it's dark with a little bit of a hint of this green light that seems to glow from the candles uh, within the, the windows of the temple. Um... And as you start to walk down slowly the center aisle, um, the pews on either side, there you start to see on the center altar, there's a few steps that lead up to this point of the altar. <clears throat> there is um, this flicker of green light that starts to just barely like spark. And then it ignites into this large, circular, um, just, it looks like just this large circular form of green flame as it starts to just rise up. And out of the, just... out of the flame, you see this figure start to emerge. And you reckon... I just stop. Okay, you just like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop um, walking you recognize the figure immediately coming out of the green flame. It's that same female figure that you saw while you were praying the night before. Um, appears to be almost wearing this faceless mask that just has these two jet black eyes within it. Um, dark jet black hair that just is completely straight that runs down almost to about where her waist would be. Almost very tall. Probably about, I don't know, probably about seven to eight foot tall 
it stands in front of you on the altar as it starts to just slowly take its steps down down the steps but you can't see feet it's almost like it's walking but it's this figure is just like kind of hovering down these steps as it walks closer to you its hands are elongated um, you can see that they almost end in these large sharp claws as it moves down um, hi, I'm Moby. I'm going to extend my hand out for a handshake. Um, as you extend your hand, it slowly keeps walking towards you. Uh, it gets within 10 feet of you, and then all of a sudden, that same thing that happened when you were praying before, it just instantly, like, quickly, that last 10 feet comes up to you and, in, and just wraps its arms around you in an embrace and immediately the chill that same chill that you felt before almost like the cold that, that an, an intense cold just right down to the right down to your bones like fills your entire body and it just embraces you for just a moment and then you hear the call of your raven Moby, you've you've been chosen, you've been selected. Now now she must get you ready. Now she must prepare you for the task at hand. Moby, you're going to change. It will take some time, but you're going to change. You may not understand it now, but the queen has much for you. She will tell you all about it in her realm. She she cannot speak to you here. Maybe it's too flabbergasted to react or do anything. It's just kind of just gives off this like meager <laughs> nod. <laughs> no. Moby, listen carefully. And you look, look to the altar. That is your destination. That is, that is where you're being led. To the altar? Is that where I'm going to change? No, you, you will spend some time with the queen herself. And we will get you ready. But you're not ready yet. I'm just going to peer up to the altar. The, um, the figure in front of you releases her embrace on you. Leans mm. down and appears to kiss your forehead and you feel that same cold... <laughs> throughout your body as it happens and immediately the figure bursts into all these small ravens just flapping their wings around you just twirling all around you as they kind of like some of them are kind of weaving through your hair as they all just kind of dissipate and they all disappear into that circular green flame in front of you and vanish <clears throat> And all you see is the glow of this green flame standing in front of you. Your raven lands back on your shoulder. It's time, Moby. Moby clutches the bear in his, <laughs> in his arms. <laughs> and just begins to walk towards this flame. Moby walks, and as he starts to head towards the flame, the you can almost feel like a a bit of heat coming from this area. And you reach out with your hand, and you can see that your hand is just disappearing through the green flame. You don't feel any pain. And then with one big step, you step through, and you disappear from sight. And the green flamed area on the altar just dissipates within seconds. 
and the green aura that's been glowing throughout the temple just kind of lifts and the light from the stained glass windows just starts to seep back into the temple and the rest of you Callista it's been five minutes I push the door open. I'm going right in. Oh so, my God. Is I don't even know if it's been five minutes. I just opened the door. Racing so, after her. Let's so, go. Callista no. uh, runs in after the five minutes. Uh, Callista, as soon as you walk in, um, Moby, let's. You see nothing but a simple temple. Moby? No answer. Can I go up to the altar? Sure. Is it elevated? It's a little bit elevated, and there are actually three altars, um, each to a different, um, each to a different god. The center one is actually a uh, Torm. Where are those three at? Well, the one to the right is Elmater. Uh, the one to uh, the one in the center is Tear. The one on the the left is Torm, and the one on the right is Ilmater. Excuse me. So none of these are Raven Queen. None of them are Raven Queen. No. I walk Did... up to Ilmater's. Okay. Moby. Did uh, Moby or Diana ever tell the group that they ran into each other when we're praying at the temple, or no? Um, I don't, did, did, did you tell them, Diana? Um, I, I think I, I probably remember. did. I think I said, when I got back, I think I said something about going to the temple, and then, like, I don't know, Moby and I returned together, so we probably came from the same place. Uh, so, Where you is... guys, you guys did hear Diana speaking of this uh, before. Diana, Diana, where was... You said he was here before. Where did he go before? Maybe he's gone back to that location somewhere in this building. I don't know. He was he was kneeling by an altar. I don't remember which one. And just praying with two dudes. I don't... I don't know. <laughs> he, he wasn't doing much of anything. Mulfin's going to walk over to one of the altars that uh, Diana's not at and start, like, searching around the base of it, the floor, trying to see if he can find a trap door or something, a Go pit, ahead. something that uh, Moby might have fallen in. You can make an investigation check, uh, Mulfin. Yeah, I'm doing investigation. Sure. Anybody, I investig yep, anybody wants to can can make an investigation. Oh, Man, wow. Diana, you've been rolling a ton of I'm going to do my tonight. inspiration. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I have a net 20. I got one. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! <laughs> nice. Um, Whoa! Even even as you guys are searching around, um, you don't see uh, as as far as like traps, or trap doors, uh, secret doors, things like that. You don't see any. There is a door that kind of leads back into kind of like a where where the priests' um, kind of belongings are, a, a simple cot and things like that uh, for him to sleep. Um, other than finding like an unlocked chest that has <laughs> some of his personal uh, belongings in there, Callista, you really don't find anything else. Um, you guys can see some no signs of him at all. Like no, like did he drop something? Is there like any marks on the floor? Any sort of struggle? Like I'm um, looking for anything and everything, not just traps. I'm looking for gotcha. any signs of where he could have possibly gone. You find. Was he, was he yeah, was he abducted by aliens? <laughs> you find you find a uh, a small button lying in front of the center altar. Um, you presume it might have been one of the eyes from the bear that Lachlan had given him. But that's the only sign uh, that you have um, as you're searching this place. I think he's gone. Uh, uh, what did you say? What What did you find, Callista? I think he's gone. How? 
Where? I don't know, but I have a feeling it had something to do with the raven. He said the raven told him to go. Can I do a religion check and see if this is a normal thing that gods do? If they just scoop people up and take them? <laughs> sure. I use my nat 20. Oh, you're going to use your nat 20. Okay, sure. Yeah. You can use your nat 20. Um, you remember hearing um, back in Daggerford. I believe his name was uh, Dorn, Amber Crown, Amber Crown, the high priest of the Temple of Elmater in Daggerford. Um, he had, um, he knew of a couple instances where um, people have disappeared for some time, only to turn, uh, only to come back, um, almost divinely touched. And different than when before they left. You have a feeling like this could be one of those situations. Um, it doesn't happen very often at all. And when it does, it's usually a pretty big deal. <clears throat> Guys, I think... I don't know. I think Moby is like a messiah or something. Was <laughs> <laughs> the Raven Queen? Yeah. I mean, it happens very rarely, but it can happen where a deity will take one of their followers and just, I don't know, take them away for a while. And when they come back, they're changed. Lista's now remembering our last, my last conversation with Moby, and I say, I think we need to get out of here. We need to get out of here? You mean out of town? Out of town. We gotta keep us safe until he can get back. Keep, wait, what safe? The dagger? Keep all of us safe, yes. Very true. I'll, um, I, I would like to wander over to Ilmater, though, and just pray really quickly for Moby's safety and recovery and that he comes back soon. Okay. Ask my homeboy Elmater to, you know, maybe slide in a favor with uh, the Raven Queen. <laughs> sure. So uh, Diana uh, has a quick moment of prayer. Malfin and Lachlan, anything else uh, that you guys would be doing uh, at this point? Did Callista show the gnomes the button? Uh, I'm, she's just holding it in her hand. She's not, like, showing you, but she's not hiding it either. So if you're around her and you can, you, then you can see it. If you if you weren't uh, kind of hanging around her, then you wouldn't. But. Yeah, I think we all chased in. So I'm, would we have seen where she picked it up or no? Um, yeah, it was kind of like you guys were all like around that central the area. Altar, right? So I can I can kind of see this dramatic moment where Callista like looks down and slowly picks up this button and is holding it in front of her hand, and I can see all you guys kind of like standing around as she's holding this button, you know. <laughs> Followed my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the uh, statue in the middle? Uh, it's the god Tyr, god of justice. And that's where the button was found? Mm hmm. Malfin's just staring, sort of rubbing the, the facial, just looking blank. Malfin, you can make a religion check if you wish sure why not as you're pondering <laughs> this over I got a plus 8 to religion so might as well put it to use oh my god is yours higher than nice. mine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yours is higher than mine <laughs> <laughs> but, hey I read a lot of books on religion <laughs> um <laughs> You don't feel that any of these particular gods of this temple have anything to do with what happened here. But you do also um, know enough about the Raven Queen um, to know that she is the worst enemy of anything dealing with undeath or undead. Hmm. 
because that is a legitimate cheating of death in the, the eyes of her. Given the recent events of Zulkin, you feel that the dagger and Moby's disappearance are related. Let's get to our horses for now and get out of here. We'll figure it out as we go. But that also, it also worries you, Mulfin, that Moby would need to be taken away um, because that just kind of shows you that perhaps you and your companions are not ready for this particular challenge that lies ahead of you. Or that we don't matter and she's saving her. <laughs> or the dungeon master is saving us from a TPK. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, he rolled a 22 on his religion check, you know. It's <laughs> take the hint, Muffin. Take the hint. <laughs> Alphans just going to follow Callista's lead. Yeah, I'm going straight back to the horses, and I'm making sure that everyone, including Lachlan, is following, especially Lachlan. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> Moby I'm, asked I'm, me I'm to take care of him, so now her eyes are going to be watching him all the time. <sighs> all right. So no you guys, pressure. You guys head out. As soon as you head out, um, uh, Delvin Ludwig and um, uh, Sirach of, of Suzale are st still standing outside. Another kid. How about, what happened? You can put a horse back. Nothing. It's an empty room. Oh, Lachlan, that broke his heart when you said that, Diana. <laughs> you can put <laughs> a horse. <laughs> Allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I saw tears. I saw oh. real tears. Oh. <laughs> Mulfin looks up. Are the ravens still on the roof? The ravens are gone. Oh my god. I, I'm not even talking. I'm moving ahead, but looking back, making sure they're following. Okay. Yeah, it seems everybody is, is following. <laughs> Delvin's like, wait, is, is it safe to go back in? <laughs> What's... You're good. You're the religious one. You tell me you sent us into an empty building. <laughs> <laughs> Molfin's got an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Molfin's perfidy. Well, you know, Moby's the whole reason that he's here, and now Moby's gone. It's mm. now he's now he's got to look after Lachlan. My goodness. Oh no! That might Pulled away from us by one who despises the undead. <laughs> one would almost wonder what would one need to do to get the attention of such a being. Hmm. Find uh -oh. the dad. Uh -oh. uh -oh. <laughs> so uh, as you guys are uh, uh, getting on your horses and starting to head head down, you just like hear hear Sirak and <laughs> and Delvin be like, "Oh, uh, uh, be safe, be safe." As, <laughs> as you guys are as you guys are headed out, um, you guys hear uh, uh, Abric or Agric, the uh, the dwarf. Uh, uh, woman uh, inviting people in to Bryn Shander uh, with that same kind of uh, slogan that she uh, was talking about. May I recommend a drop of fire beards? Fire brandy sold only at Kelvin's Comfort as, as you guys are passing by. You guys hear that familiar. Oh, uh, wait. Sorry. Can I go in and get a strawberry schnapps thing? Because I remember that Is Moby it? and I shared one and I want to go get one. It's, well, I you guys are, was... you guys are, it would be probably like four or five blocks Peach up the snaps. other way. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'll make a I'll make a note of it though to get it at the next place. Okay, <laughs> make a note. Again. As riding by, Mulfin will just again crotchety and you know I would not recommend that particular beverage to people. The strange green men is not worth it. <laughs> uh, she kind of she kind of looks at you awkwardly. Strange, strange green men. And you just quickly like just riding your horse by as he just just ponders it for a moment, and kind of just goes back to doing what she was doing as as you guys head on out the front gate. Um, where uh, where exactly are you guys uh, navigating to? What is south? Just going south. Um, yep. I'm gonna change you guys over to the map so you guys can see. Um, 
the area. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. Are you all able to see? Yeah. It's loading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still loading. Um, if you guys scroll all the way up to the top, you'll see the map um, where it says Bryn Shander. Um, the 10 trail right here is pretty much the only easy uh, route. You'll pass through a place called uh, Hundlestone, um, where it meets the uh, the northern means, which will take you more south down to Luskin. Um, so as you guys um, are continuing to ride, I would like... Um, Everyone to go ahead and make everyone except for Moby to go ahead and make a uh, perception check for me. Oh, except for Moby. I want to like turn and give one last <laughs> shander on the way out. Okay, and you can see uh, just the the smoke billowing Ooh. out of different uh, different structures and buildings as you look back to Bryn Shander. Um, seems about even though that a couple of the buildings had been damaged from the the frost giants attack uh, it seems like how you remember kind of seeing it as it came through the clouds when you guys were were headed here on the uh the cloud giants tower wow all of those kind of different one. though and then holy. holy diana as you guys are traveling um you look ahead and about probably, like, jumps out. probably like 80 to 100 feet in front of you you can see some figures uh, kind of hiding on either side of the road um, Moby you see these figures and you they look a little bit familiar. Um, back when you guys were... Oh, you still there, uh, Zoss? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Lost you in the video, so I was just making sure you were still with us. Uh, oh. Back back in Nightstone, um, when you guys had to defend the... the, the, uh, the small village, uh, you recognize these as orcs. And there are several of them kind of hanging out along the sides of the road. Um, Mulfin, you also catch a glimpse of a few of these figures. Um, it seems as if they're armed and they can see you coming. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. How, far, how far away are they? Um, probably about 80 feet to 100 feet, somewhere in that zone. I say, everyone, stop. And nice I prepare a fireball. Okay. What's going on? There are people in front of us. Diana, can you reach them from here? I mean, with a fireball I can, but I don't know about negotiating. Well, why don't you and I say hello in the way that I'd really prefer to, given this afternoon's occurrences? Hello is in fireball? But of course. How do we know it's not Obi up there waiting to surprise us? <laughs> they are orcs. Are they necessarily evil people? I mean, they're just orcs. The fireball safety precaution will definitely use it. <laughs> um, Diana, also with your perception check, as you're starting to prepare your fireball um, on the back of uh, you, as you guys are riding closer you see that one of the orcs has all of a sudden you could you couldn't see it at first but has someone like in it almost like a headlock oh no and oh god it, no. It, it it appears that they have a, a a prisoner that they're keeping oh okay <laughs> <laughs> So you're you're worried fireball. you're worried that your fireball might not only consume them but consume this uh, what looks like uh, to be uh, some kind of a, a, a female prisoner. Collateral damage. Fireball. This is no longer <laughs> anything. This is a rescue mission, and we're gonna go and we're gonna 
the rest of the mission. They have a prisoner. We have to free them. How do we know it's not a trap? We can kill them from here and figure it out afterwards. <laughs> I have faith that this is just another test and that mercy is a better option here. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Say hello. The polite way. Morphin's preparing a level three spell, uh, level two spell. <laughs> okay. I mean, yes, do that. We're, we're polite, we're not dumb. I'm also preparing a spell. Okay. Making sure my crossbow is loaded. Crossbow. And I will pull my Diana thing, and I will walk up and say hello. Okay. And targeting the one who has the uh, prisoner held. Targeting the one that has the prisoner held. Okay. Oh. Got you. Um, Diana, you approach. Uh, how far away are you getting uh, before you say I'll hello? I'll stay about um, 20 feet, so I'm like a safe distance to run, but also within earshot. Okay. Um, as you get in within 20 feet and say hello, one of them throws a javelin at you. <laughs> <laughs> so what I need everybody to do is go ahead and um, we're going to get everybody over to a map. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we will wait till next week to roll initiative. But we're not going we're not, we're not to call the stream just yet. Uh, Moby. Um, he appears and saves us. <laughs> Don't uh, you <laughs> wish? <laughs> he has fallen uh, in a river um, again. Moby, you um, you find yourself yep. in a very dark place. Um, in front of you there is. Uh, it's. It's unit 252. What looks like a... <laughs> it's unit 252. <laughs> Moby has yeah, arrived. Yeah, it's 9452, but the 9452 is a series of four she's, houses. Can we kick her? She's not muted. She's giving her information out. There should be yeah, numbers Calista, on the houses. Calista, I can try. I don't know how to do that. Oh, no. If you kick her, she, uh, she won't be able to get back in. Christy. We just... Christy. Yeah. Uh, did she get muted yet? If you're coming no, from she's 90, not. No, no, she's not. Just make a Donald? Okay, so uh, I'm just going to talk to her It's on the left hand side. She's pressing her information because, you know, we don't want to uh, do that. Second one, so just before the... We're just going to keep babbling over you. Yeah, just keep making no, noise over the top of her voice. Oh, wait, no, I can mute her. I've muted okay, her. Okay, there you go. And it was really great. And so, you know, that's done. I'm, I'm <laughs> I've got her muted. <laughs> okay, so we'll still be able to hear her, but... Uh... Yeah. No, um, you know, other things that are cool... Um, uh, yeah, I've got friend, muted. Amazing, All right, amazing. cool, cool, cool. Sorry about that, sorry everybody. About that, streamers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, viewers. Sorry, viewers. It happens. <laughs> uh, Moby, you do not, um, you do not approach the unit. Um, <laughs> you, you, you approach no. this. Uh, hang on, hang on. This, we, we can we still hear. hear. You can still hear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. You've muted her for you. Mm -hmm. We would all have to mute her as well. Uh, we gotcha, so gotcha. the stream can't hear her, but we still can. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right. <laughs> Mr. Carrot Rope. Yeah, thank you for bearing with us, Mr. Carrot Rope. <laughs> I. Yeah, I'm trying everything I can, but she's not noticing the alerts popping up, tag door. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, you guys. Um... You guys still hearing her then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. um you know what? What we'll do is we will end right here tonight. <laughs> so, so, so that way uh, we can have everybody uh, together uh, for what is about to happen. Although, Moby, um, I want to let everybody know that uh, what has occurred tonight, uh, Moby, uh, JJ, is going to be taking a, a little bit of a hiatus. Actually, uh, it may be clear. Um, is it clear? She's not speaking anymore. Okay, I'll unmute her. From mine. <laughs> Christy, you all good? Sorry, I had the delivery guy. He's lost. I don't. I totally yeah. missed what happened. I didn't hear anything. Well, I, I went. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, the, 
I went and the muted it. Got your address. So. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I, I muted you so that everybody in the world didn't know where you live. Oh, it wasn't <laughs> muted. No, it wasn't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. You're fine. Sorry. I just, what I just didn't. No one shows your house. <laughs> so, Moby's gonna show up at her house. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and call the stream uh, right there tonight. Um, and I was just explaining, uh, Moby uh, JJ is gonna be taking a little bit of a hiatus from the group. Um, he has a, uh, a couple things that he's got to do the next month and a half, possibly two months. Involving ravens. <laughs> In real life. So, um, those of you wondering... And cucumbers. <laughs> those of you wondering about Moby's departure tonight, that is, uh, that is why. And, but next week, we will have a uh, special guest be joining us. Um, uh, her name is Sarah. She is actually in our Monday night campaign, uh, the Tomb of Annihilation campaign. Um, she will be uh, coming on board uh, to jump on while uh, while JJ is uh, is away. So um, we will be welcoming welcoming Sarah next week, um, and we will see how how all that goes. But that was that was pretty fun tonight, guys. Some really creepy things happening. Um, Man, <laughs> some random invisible thefts. Invisible thefts. <laughs> that was pretty pretty awesome. D DM DM dropping some some hints. <laughs> Run the other direction, you will be murdered. <laughs> Why you fools? <laughs> um, Wait, my for real question. Could we have gotten obliterated the first time we tried to fight Zulkin? If that had, uh, I don't know. No, no. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. No, no. Uh, can I inside check the DM? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Uh, I would Twitch, like to use my free nat twenty. Twitch, Twitch chat. Do I get a nat twenty on this one? <laughs> can, I, can, I, can, I, can I buy one from you, Twitch chat? <laughs> well, uh, I want to. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Matthew. What were you going to say? Oh, no, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, Thank you, all of you who tuned in tonight. Uh, thank you to our uh, new subscribers and followers tonight. Man, that was that was awesome. Uh, and those of you that chimed in in Twitch chat, Ninja, thank you for uh, some of my uh, clarifications uh, in there. And uh, you guys, thank you so much for being such a great community of viewers and followers. We uh, we love you guys. Um, but right now we need to uh, we need to give out a nat twenty. Um, Twitch chat, is there anybody in particular that stood up to you? Um, can I vote Moby? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, Mr. Carrot right. Rope, wherever he is, Mr. Carrot Rope is saying, "Down with power structures! No more nat twenties or ones." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to give it to Diana. Buy the power. Given, given one to Diana. What, what, what do we give yeah. one for Diana? For Diana. Her with. Her with talking to Clarion, that was just, <laughs> no, Wolfen, no crap given. Wolfen's mischief, though, that was <laughs> what she what's was funny doing. Is, and what's funny is, no one has an idea yet. <laughs> so, I don't want to give Molfin the nat 20, because Molfin's going to use it to screw us with later. I want to give Lachlan the nat 20, because you know what, he's funny when he screws us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Molfin was He's incredibly awful. <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's hilarious. Funny, funny. Yeah. I went for Molfin to screw the group because I won't be there. So. Oh, we got two, <laughs> two, two votes for Molfin just because JJ won't be here. That's, that's right. So. Uh, and meanwhile, Molfin's idea is to help the group, but no one's asked. Well, actually, Diana right. asked, and he'd blind flat to her, so. <laughs> it so, runs in the family. You claim to love her, and you lie. <laughs> He got grandfather zoned. He was hurt. <laughs> you, you hurt him. <laughs> yeah. I, when you're in love and you're hurt, you do stupid things. Year old. <laughs> I was getting that twenty. That whole hold, hold your horses thing. That made me want to die. It was great. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> the hold your horse. Thank I, you. I, I I don't know. The whole using the unseen servant to grab that dagger. Uh, I did not oh, see that, that cool. coming. I did not see that, that coming. Cool. So. Neither did I. I thought he was going to try to bum money off of us. <laughs> so since uh, <laughs> since Diana had the uh, nat 20 last week, we'll give it to Molfin uh, for next week. 
Um, and everybody is awarded DM's inspiration, um, including Moby. Uh-oh. But you're going to have to hold on to yours for a little while, uh, Moby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see if Lachlan can hold it together while you're gone. I don't I don't know. It's probably too soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Carrot Rope's even voting for Molfin as long as he uses quadruple black flip next time. Oh. oh. We'll see if the old man can pull it off. Uh, you know. <laughs> the funny the or way. maybe something more nefarious. Than <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the Nat 20 set right now so I know to put that over here. So we'll put that right there next to Mulfin. So it's all set to go. Um, once again, viewers, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to new followers and, and subscribers. If you haven't hit the follow button yet, make sure you do so. Uh, if you're checking out this video on YouTube and you uh, and you liked, uh, liked what you saw, like what you heard, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow us. Uh, make sure you guys check out all the content that we have up there on the YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to tune in on Monday nights as Matthew runs his clan through the Tomb of Annihilation. Um, so I'm anxious for Monday uh, to kick back on to see what happens to that group. So it'll be fantastic. Um, what happens to poor Gizzard? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, JJ is also in that campaign as well. So I'm trying to yeah. trying to wrap my head around what exactly is going to happen to to King Gizzard. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, he's like my favorite character. I hope he doesn't go anywhere. So serious payback is what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can't kill I, a fan favorite. I know that. Um, <laughs> Uh, both MG and JJ have been running their own campaigns recently. Um, how things been going, guys? Things been going okay? All I heard was how and K. Yeah. So, oh, how how have things been going with your uh, uh, dungeon mastering of the other campaigns uh, so far? Oh, good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, JJ, right? <laughs> Nobody's dying. <laughs> Very yeah, real pleased. good. Very <laughs> pleased with the outcomes. <laughs> <laughs> Lachlan, how about your experience? Is it going okay? Mr. Yeah, it's MG? going well. We're yep. playing again this week. Playing again this week. I'm going to try to kill everybody, so you know, <laughs> you know how that goes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, ask JJ for tips. He's really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. How about you, Diana? Anything going on in your world? Mrs. Zoss? Uh, I got my GED, so I have high school equivalency, so I'm done with school, and I can go to college right. now. Yay! Excellent. Excellent. Give us a uh, you, you you can be our 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 web person. Help yeah. us help us fix our technology issues. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, JJ! Wow, JJ! <laughs> <laughs> Go get it! Get it. <laughs> JJ. Um, uh, Christy, I know you got insight check on Mondays. Yep, insight check on Mondays, one thirty p.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go check check out that group. Um, also, um, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot on stream, but uh, I'm thinking about doing the thing where about every two months or so, um, even if I'm not going to be out of town, maybe us running like a one shot adventure uh, in, on Fridays. Um, so I was wondering maybe, Christy, uh, not to put you on the spot, if you would be oh, interested no. uh, and maybe... <laughs> maybe the next time that we jump in here to to run us a one shot and hopefully i can be a player in your uh in your one shot oh. adventure oh. Uh, to do that way to so, put on the pressure God hey I, I figure i got you on stream ask now oh. <laughs> wait this guy on, <laughs> on live stream okay fine <laughs> and this will be on the recording too so you know stumpy will watch a recording and hear this be asked and, you know. oh, <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna check check my calendar there's a there's a couple dates that that could be a possibility I, i'm I'll, I'll give you plenty of time to uh, to organize and, and get things ready yes uh, please yeah <laughs> and uh basically i just uh you know want to make sure that we keep Storm King's Thunder fresh, and that's I, I like to give myself a break uh, every now and then, just so mm-hmm. yeah. uh, DMs can get burned <laughs> out. So I don't want to yeah. get too burned out. Uh, I'm getting burned well. out here, Christy. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, here you go. Ah, I need a break. Go, Christy. 
<laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, and if any of you, uh, you know, once we get, uh, once Christy uh, runs her one shot, we'll, you know, about, I'm thinking about once every two months or something like that, we'll throw one in. Um, of course, when I'm away, um, we'll, anybody who wants to jump in and, and run something on Friday night, we can, we can do that. Cause, uh, want to make sure that we've got something going, especially for, I mean, we, got a, a good group of uh twitch viewers and followers that uh that kind of come out and they want to hang out with you guys so it'd be really cool awesome well thank you guys Yay, once again good game, guys. yeah good game everybody uh we will be back here uh next friday night uh, for episode 22 as our adventurers have come across uh, looks like a band of orcs uh waiting in an ambush uh for our for our friends and we will get to welcome Sarah as well. So it'll be a really good, uh, really good evening and I'm looking forward to it. So thank you to team MZ, many sided dice and nightshade creations. And no matter what happens this week, no matter what situation you find yourself in, don't forget to add your proficiency bonus. It's important. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Hey, love you. Bye.